Here we are, Matt's side, Florentine Gardens in El Monte, California. TJ DeSantis, along with the Killer V, Ben Saunders, and Calvin Gastelum. We've already seen two matches tonight. It all leads up to our pay-per-view, top of the hour, inchbyinch.tv and ufc.tv. Two tournaments are headed your way. The lightweight division and bantamweight division get CJJ champions here tonight. A guy who's on a mission for gold in the UFC middleweight division is Kelvin Gastelum. Kelvin, when you look at the history that is going to be made here tonight, the first of any, you know, quest is always remembered. Hoist Gracie, you know, remember 24 years ago today, he became a legend. Someone's going to try to become a legend tonight in combat jiu-jitsu. That's right. Everybody remembers the first UFC 24 years ago today to the exact day. Uh, tonight we're making history once again with CJJ and we're going to see who comes out on top. It's going to be an exciting night. One thing that is really exciting about combat jiu-jitsu is the fact that you have young grapplers that are thinking about getting into mixed martial arts or have some amateur experience. They're going against fighters that have long records in MMA. Ben, when we look at a guy like Barrett Yoshida, he's got like 40 plus fights in mixed martial arts. He could be going against someone that has never fought before in MMA. You gotta believe that that's a big advantage for Barrett Yoshida. Oh, he definitely has the advantage there, just the experience of being able to perform jiu-jitsu while getting punched in the face. It's a whole different ball game. And once again, you need to either be close in where you're not getting struck or further no, uh, far enough away that uh, they can't hit you. You mentioned getting struck. That is what it's all about, right? This isn't your typical jiu-jitsu tournament. Palm strikes, that's what these fighters need to worry about tonight. When the fight hits the floor, when one opponent is grounded, they are able to be hit. Now, when you are able to strike your opponent, Kelvin, it opens up a lot of things, guard passes and submissions. Absolutely, I mean, it, it opens up everything. I mean, if you're mounted, you're, you're getting slapped, I mean, you're gonna wanna get out of that position and it's gonna open up transitions, it's gonna open up submissions for, for your opponent. You know, when you think about palm strikes, some people go, oh, well, they're just slaps. Tell that to Boss Rutten, right, Ben? He made yeah, a career absolutely. out of that pancreas. No, and he actually, if anybody wants to look it up, man, you can go on YouTube and see exactly how he does it. Uh, if any of these guys bring that kind of power into uh, combat jiu-jitsu, we are going to see some TKOs. Yeah, we will see if we get any of that here tonight. Already, some of the palm strikes have taken place almost on the feet. Again, when three points of a fighter are on the floor, palm strikes are able to be thrown, and we saw that in our last matchup. We will see if we will get a TKO here tonight. You know we want to see champions. These guys want to become the first ever combat jiu-jitsu champion. You know they would love to be the first person to TKO somebody in combat jiu-jitsu. Oh, yeah. I think everybody kind of wants to see it deep in their heart. They want to see people get knocked out, too. <laughs> in mixed martial arts, there's the stand-up rule. In combat jiu-jitsu, there's the get-down rule. Of course, the action, it only intensifies when the fight hits the floor. So at any point, when any of our grapplers tonight spend two minutes or more on the feet, they will be forced to go to the floor. And again, that opens up everything. The get down rule, the referee will call a halt to the action, a coin will be flipped, and then the winner of that coin toss will be given the opportunity to go on offense on top or bottom. Now, you gotta believe, Ben, that winning that coin toss, you wanna be in the position that best suits you, and that coin toss is very pivotal for these grapplers. For sure, the coin toss is key. But there are some amazing jiu-jitsu practitioners off their back with so much heat from their back that they might actually choose to go there because where you start can be a dominant position if you know how to use it. That's a really good point. I mean, we talked about 24 years ago today, Hoist Gracie showed that you could win fights off of your back. The close guard position, that's one thing that can be implemented here tonight. If you're on top and you're getting comfortable throwing those strikes, there are a lot of opportunities for the bottom fighter, Kelvin, to frame up triangles, to do arm bars. You're not out of danger when you're in the close guard. Uh, you're definitely not out of danger when you're when you're in the close guard. I mean, you, the guy on top can definitely stay there, chill there, and drop bombs, drop slaps, drop palm strikes on you. So you can't just chill there from the bottom. And the action intensifies, but for the bottom person, for the top person, this is where tactics really come into play. And I think a lot of these fighters, Ben, are gonna have to pay attention to who they're competing against and figure out, like you said, if we have a get down rule, do I wanna be on top or bottom? Yeah, there is definitely gonna be strategy in knowing who you're going against, knowing their strengths and weaknesses if possible. And if you can uh, implement your game correctly against theirs, essentially, you should win. All right, up next, you have to worry about the open guard position. Of course, a lot of times you'd be fighting somebody and they close their guard up, 
when you start throwing strikes, the guard becomes open. Now, it is dangerous for both fighters. If you're on top, your opponent's guard is open, you can look for that pass. But also, when a fighter opens their guard, that sometimes means they're going for submissions. Right, I mean, when people are throwing their legs up, when they're opening, putting the, their feet on the hips, that's when they're looking to be on the offense. Open guard in a variety of facets. You can have a butterfly guard, you can have a rubber guard. You know quite a bit about the rubber guard. Yeah. Again, the, the whole point of jujitsu and combat jujitsu is to get more data to improve technique. And when the fight hits the floor, we're focused a lot about on strikes, but strikes open up submissions. Strikes open up submissions, and also at the end of the day, I mean, a lot of people take jiu-jitsu for self-defense. So we're learning key, key fundamentals of what can and cannot work and what moves you might want to employ in your, in your self-defense. We see a lot of technique in action here at Combat Jiu-Jitsu, and really we're going to see a lot of uh, other techniques as well. And, you know, one thing we saw earlier tonight the mount, it has always been a dominant position in mixed martial arts and combat jiu-jitsu. It intensifies. You can almost say, Kelvin, that the mount in regular jiu-jitsu tournaments, it's a position of dominance, but with strikes, it's a position of danger. It's a position of extreme danger. If you're being mounted and you get and slapped, I mean, that's a bad, bad position, even in MMA and also especially in combat jiu-jitsu. And uh, man, I mean, those, those palm strikes are what opens up every, you know, submission, transition. So uh, I'm excited to see all these competitors compete tonight. Again, two tournaments headed your way tonight. Top of the hour, the first ever Combat Jiu-Jitsu Worlds. We will crown a lightweight and bantamweight championship. Top of the hour, inchbyinch.tv, and of course, UFC.tv. Hey everybody, once again, TJ DeSantis, the killer B, Ben Saunders, Kelvin Gastelum. Kelvin, one thing that is really exciting is the tournament. The tournament is the story. You will learn so much about the fighters, so much about yourself if you're one of these competitors. The tournament, you have to be expecting the unexpected. And really, a fighter can go from, you know, a, a middle of the road when it comes to like well-known type of person. Yeah. When you win a tournament, you can become a superstar. Absolutely, I mean, I love the fact that they're doing the tournament format. It takes me back to the old UFC days. So it gives it that old school feeling as well. And like you said, I mean, uh, these guys are, are, are coming in hot and they're coming in ready. Yeah, and we're going to see it play out. I mean, talk about the endurance factor of this tournament, Ben, because when you look at what these fighters have to go through, it's one thing to just grapple three separate times. It's another thing to grapple and get hit in the head. Big time. It's a, it's a completely different kind of endurance. And the biggest thing is, how do you keep your heart rate either controlled or low while getting struck in the face? Whether you're on top or the bottom, if you're getting struck in the face, you're in the body or in the legs, which we've even seen. Can you maintain your heart rate correctly so you can endure potentially this many rounds? There's some pressure on some fighters. You got to think that Tyson Griffin having that UFC shine, he might be a favorite in the lightweight bracket. And uh, let's take a look at the lightweight bracket coming your way because this is a, a field of killers. Wagner Hosha, wow. uh, a, a finalist in EBI. He wants to be a finalist here tonight. There are names. A lot of killers in that. A lot of killers in that bracket. I mean, you got Hap Wagner Hosha, Rafael Domingos, Tyson Griffin, Nathan Orchard. I mean, these guys are coming to bring it. I'm excited. We are just five minutes away from our tournament kickoff, inchbyinch.tv. But again, the lightweight tournament, not the only tournament to worry about. The Bantamweights will take center stage once again. Nick Honstein, he is the reigning defending EBI CJJ champion. Tonight he wants to be a CJJ world champion, and you know that means a lot to the Nebraska native. Yeah, it definitely means a lot. You saw him get super emotional when he won his uh, combat jiu-jitsu debut and, and won his division. Now he gets to try to maintain it against all these savages that they they got linked up, man. I mean, J.M. Holland, Nick Pace, Barrett Yoshida. He's got a lot of people that he's going to have to go through. This is going to be super interesting how this plays out. Let's not forget former WEC veteran, former EBI CJJ finalist, Chad the Savage George. Kelvin, you know Chad George wants to be just like his nickname. He wants to be a savage. That's right. I mean, he's coming off a uh, uh, rib injury that he had last week. He was a finalist in the last CBI, uh, CJJ against Nick Honstein. And like we said, he wants, he, wants to re, he, re, he wants redemption, you know? And he wants to win, he wants to uh, win this belt tonight. You know, a lot, of is, a, a lot is made about strikes in jiu-jitsu and how maybe it's grappling and maybe not a fight. 
this is a fight. If you watch our two preliminaries already, you know this is a fight. Ask Danny Prokopos and Elias Anderson yeah. if this is a fight. When you are fighting potentially three times, you're in a different mindset. This isn't just a grappling tournament. This is a fight. Oh, it definitely is a fight. Um, and as we also saw, man, you're going to see moments that did you keep your hands up the block yourself? I mean, every time you go for a leg, every time you're just trying to get in on a, a, a leg from your guard, you're getting slapped in the face. Everything's going to change on that. And, and I, like, like we've been saying, man, the evolution of the game is going to kind of be showcased for everybody tonight. We've made a lot about the strikes, but of course, submissions are still the emphasis here at CJJ Worlds. If you get a submission or a stoppage in regulation, you're going to bank $5,000 for yourself should you win the tournament, a potential $15,000 prize. One thing that has been a standout in the submission only rule format has been the leg game. We'll see the leg game here tonight. We've already seen it a little bit earlier, but the leg game does change quite a bit, Calvin, when you can be struck in the face. Absolutely. I mean, I'm going to take a Mike Tyson reference. He said, you know, everybody has a plan until they get hit, you know, and, and same thing here. I mean, if you're on the bottom position trying to go for a leg lock or a ankle lock, I mean, you're in a bad position uh, potentially to get striped. We are just two minutes away from the inaugural CJJ World Tournament. We will crown a Bantamweight and Lightweight Champion. Now, again, going back to UFC 1, we talked about it earlier. We've seen the sport, and we've seen martial arts change so much in the last 25 years. We're going to start to see these fighters develop strategy and tactics. What would be your strategy headed into an overtime format where there's only one overtime in the beginning of the, 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 the quarterfinals? If you were headed to overtime, Ben, what would your strategy be? Would it be to go for the submission, or would you want to try to go for it after maybe riding out some time a little bit? Oh, man, that's a good one. It would depend, I guess, whether or not I went first and how angry I was, because I could easily see myself being pissed off and saying, I'm going to just get as many strikes as I can, whether I win or not. I'm going to make you bleed before this is done. Um, but if you're looking for the win, man, I would probably take the back, try to control as much as possible, and look for a TKO. A finish-only tournament, finish-only jujitsu that is headed your way, top of the hour, CJJ Worlds. Calvin, I can't implore these people to buy the pay-per-view enough. We're going to witness history here tonight. Yes, I mean, everybody remembers Hoist Gracie 24 years ago tonight. Tonight, there's going to be a winner, and they're going to remember him for a long time as well. So I implore you guys to order the pay-per-view, inchbyinch.tv. Inchbyinch.tv, UFC.tv, eight lightweights, eight bantamweights. They want to carve a spot out for themselves in history. There's also a $15,000 cash prize on the line in one of the coolest belts in grappling. Combat Jiu-Jitsu World.
a special attraction no longer. Tonight, Combat Jiu Jitsu takes center stage. We are inside Florentine Gardens in beautiful El Monte, California for the first ever Combat Jiu Jitsu Worlds. Allow me to take you back to November 12, 1993. It was 24 years ago to the date. Hori and Gracie's brainchild, the Ultimate Fighting Championship, launched, really sparking a mixed martial arts and martial arts revolution. It was a vehicle to promote Gracie Jiu Jitsu. Tonight, the movement starts all over again. This time, it is the brainchild of Eddie Bravo and Master Vic Davila. Combat Jiu Jitsu. It could be the next evolution of the ground. Hey everybody, I'm TJ DeSantis. Welcome to CJJ Worlds. Tonight, two tournaments are headed your way with titles and cash on the line. Bantamweights will take center stage as reigning and defending EBI Combat Jiu-Jitsu champion Nick Honstein looks to return to the place it all started last March. He won the first ever EBI CJJ tournament and he did so with his Jiu-Jitsu technique. Fighting out of Nebraska, he was able to show off that Jiu-Jitsu technique but complemented with strikes. He was able to finish a field of fantastic standouts, some of which we'll see later tonight, but he did so in the ultimate way, winning via Twister. He looks to replicate that success tonight. If he does, he will be the first ever combat jiu-jitsu world champion. I'm flanked by some heavy hitters here tonight. To my left, it is the killer bee, Ben Saunders. Ben, the first ever CJJ Worlds is finally upon us, and it's a big night, big night in particular for JM Holland. Yeah, JM Holland is back. He's a, he's a wizard on the ground. Don't be surprised to see him pull guard. Um, he feels that he has improved his game since strikes, uh, employing the strikes uh, of his jiu-jitsu from the last time he competed. Uh, but still, do not, uh, do not uh, be confused with him going inverted or going for leg locks. Even if he is going to get struck, uh, he, he has definitely worked on that. And his rubber guard is super high notch. J.M. Holland would look for some redemption here tonight as he looks to become the first ever CJJ Bantamweight Champion. To my right, it is a UFC veteran, the middleweight contender, Kelvin Gastelum. It's been a big week for you, sir, but it's also a big night and big week for Chad George, who was also in that EBI CJJ tournament. Unfortunately, he was injured tonight. He looks to make good. <clears throat> That's right. One of the guys that I'm looking forward to the most tonight is, is Chad George. You know, he's a WC veteran, and so you know he's got a lot of high-level experience training and competing in mixed martial arts. Um, and, and, you know, he was a finalist in the last CJJ against Nick Honstein. Uh, had a rib injury during the match, so he lost that match. But tonight, he's coming back fresh, he's coming back healthy, and I'm excited to uh, see him put on the show. The Savage Chad George is here with a point to prove. That's not only the action in the Bantamweight division coming your way, we have a lightweight tournament headed your way as well. A potential $15,000 on the line. I say potential because you have to finish your opponents within regulation. Tonight, it's not only about the submission, it's about the stoppage, whether it be by way of joint lock or choke, or strikes. We will find out what happens. The first ever CJJ Worlds starts right now. Combat Jiu Jitsu Worlds is a Finnish only Jiu Jitsu tournament where all submissions are legal. No points, no advantages, no judges. Open palm strikes are allowed once any combatant is grounded. Palm strikes to the body, head, and face will all be legal. However, strikes to the back of the head and groin are not permitted. If the action remains on the feet for over two minutes, a horn will sound. A referee will then flip a coin and a get down rule will be implemented. The winner of the coin toss will choose either top or bottom position in butterfly sit up guard with double underhooks. Tonight's matches consist of one 10 minute round. If no finish after 10 minutes occurs, then we'll head to one EBI overtime round with a three minute time limit. In overtime, palm strikes are allowed. I'd like to thank proud sponsors of our Combat Jiu Jitsu World. Nuaza Apparel. Barnana, the super banana snack. Datsusara, hemp gear for victory. Cnex Wear. Elixicure, all natural hemp infused pain relief. 10th Planet Jiu Jitsu, no gi, all day. Over 90 locations worldwide. Visit them at 10thplanetjj.com. 
and our main sponsor, West Coast Cure. Ladies and gentlemen, we are live from the Florentine Gardens in Los Angeles, California, for the premiere of Combat Jiu-Jitsu Worlds. This event features a two eight-man combat jiu-jitsu brackets in the bantamweight and lightweight divisions. Brought to you by our main sponsor, West Coast Cure, get the cure. Tonight, we witness the birth of a new sport and Eddie Bravo's newest innovation in jiu-jitsu as 22 of the best grapplers in the world, including former and current UFC fighters, will battle to become the first combat jiu-jitsu world's champion in the bantamweight and the lightweight division. Please welcome the combat jiu-jitsu world's founders, 10th Planet Jiu-Jitsu Black Belt and UFC Spanish commentator, Master Vic, Victor Davila! And the 10th Planet Jiu-Jitsu founder and true Jiu-Jitsu legend, Eddie Bravo! Today is a very special day in the history of mixed martial arts as November 12th marks the 24th anniversary of the UFC. And here tonight is also a special day for the entire jiu-jitsu community. For our viewers watching around the world on pay-per-view, on Inch by Inch TV, and UFC TV, and here, all of you in our audience tonight, it's time for the birth of Combat Jiu-Jitsu World! The beginning! All about tonight, our sanction by Camo, the California Amateur Mixed Martial Arts Organization led by President J.T. Steele. Our event supervisor in attendance, Chris Crail, our referees in charge, Mike Beltran and Jonathan Romero, and our mat side physician, Dr. Vega. And now, introducing first to the mat, representing Lincoln Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, Quick Nick Hostin. And his opponent, representing Tiger Showman's MMA. Nick Pretty Boy Pants! It has been a long time coming. Combat Jiu Jitsu Worlds 1 takes center stage. It is reigning and defending EBI CJJ champion Nick Honstein looking to capture CJJ gold tonight when he takes on Nick Pace. All right, gentlemen, first round. Good fight. Let's fight. Let's go. Honstein in the black pace in the red rash guard. We are underway. For Honstein, he was able to capture a CJJ title when he did it in this very building, winning a four-man tournament with a twister. Tonight, it is seven other competitors will have to go through winning three fights should he find himself the CJJ world champion. Now we see a tie up here. Again, no strikes allowed on the feet. We must hit the floor. At least more than one point of any fighter needs to be on the floor. For Nick Honstein, he had an MMA career, Kelvin. It didn't work out the way that he exactly wanted it to. He gave up on that dream and now has a dream that's going pretty well in CJJ. Very well done. Well, he has the experience of MMA, so that should be an advantage coming in tonight. Nick Pace also has had uh, some MMA experience, not as much as Honstein, but he does have a pro record of eight and three. You know, Ben, what you've seen thus far tonight, how much different is this from mixed martial arts when, when the match hits the floor? Uh, it's not too much different, man. 
I mean, I, I would say the biggest thing is not being able to kick the legs when they're basically in the guard form on the ground is the only thing that I see uh, pretty much different. Otherwise, for a yeah. takedown. Got his head wrapped up by pace, but able to pass the guard wisely is the EBI CJJ champion. Beautiful, beautiful double leg takedown by uh, the champion. Now Pace in the half guard here, has the half guard on, Nick Honstein. Honstein's nickname, Quick. He'd like to get it done quick here tonight and save some energy for round number two. Nick Quick Honstein. <laughs> Honstein was able to employ a variety of techniques. He got that twister, but set up a lot of stuff by strikes. You see one strike there. Let's see if he tries to punish Pace here. We were talking earlier, Nick Pace out of Team Tiger Shulman, that, that's generally a karate school. You look at their MMA fighters, a lot of them stand-up guys. Nick Pace kind of bucking that trend here tonight at CJJ. Right, right, that's right. 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 I remember Tiger Shulman's because Uriah Hall, yep. who I fought in the finals of the Ultimate Fighter, he was from the Tiger Shulman's. Ooh, beautiful strike nice there by Pace from the floor. Nice, Nick. And they're generally a striking school, not a jiu-jitsu school, so interesting. Nick, keep mixing it up, Nick. Pace peppering the body, left hands here. Yeah, Nick Pace actually has a choke, kind of named after him, the Pace choke. He, uh, he kind of goes to what looks like a mission control, but it's more like a uh, the gun show version of mission control. And he gets kind of a, a forearm in triangle that he's finished people with. So well, it'll be interesting if he can pull that off or attempt to pull that off tonight. Looking at Pace here on the floor, Kelvin, he's got that left overhook. He bailed on it there. Now he's eating some punishment. I think that's why he had that overhook. He Ooh. wanted to make sure he wasn't eating any right hands from Honsting, which he is now. Hey, you sit there in half guard, that's going to happen. If you chill there, that's going to happen. <clears throat> yeah, half guard is going to be a great, great top player game to rain down strikes for sure. Looks like Pace is trying to get a sweep, maybe induce a scramble. Honstein's been here before, as I mentioned, in this exact building. Very comfortable in this type of format. Is he trying to neck crank here, Ben? Uh, no, well, right now he's kind of controlling and making sure he doesn't get swell, swept. The foot, not the ankle, the foot. He's grabbing the left leg there, but now he's getting some strikes. Not hard shots, but see if it makes him move. Yeah, he is. I mean, he's playing. Oh, there, you go. there we go. There you go. Now let's get no. some head and arm control. Ooh. Honestly, now going to the body very hard. There you go. Bring your knee up. Bring your knee. Mark that knee through. I finished the fight one time like that. Oh, so. that'll definitely break a rib, especially <laughs> those floating lowered ribs. Nice little scramble here. Pace maybe going to try to get on top, unable to do so thus far. <laughs> Beautiful uh, knee down. Yeah, nice. Now Hanstein. Oh, finds wow. himself in a reverse mount position. Yeah, he's got to watch his legs here. There you go. Oh. Good. Gives it up to maintain top Five, control. Four and a half minutes down. Let's, let's Doing great, the guard, Nick. Four and a half minutes into this endurance left. round. If we go to Five overtime, there will be one overtime here in our quarterfinal we'll matchups. There you go. We will have the three maximum allowed in the semifinals and finals. Look at Hanstein using that forearm to really this rain down the pressure. This is where that MMA experience will come through. Yeah, Very comfortable here in this position. Raining down strikes, looking for other positions and transitions. He's doing a great job. Uh, well, not there, but he was trying when he was in half guard here to kind of control that arm, the striking arm. Almost like a Demi Maia approach where he would be able to dive under if he used his left arm to strike. Yeah. But now he's just smashing them. Yeah, the pressure here from Hanstein. This is really, uh, you know, his strategy. We've seen that thus far in his EBI CJJ matchups, and again here tonight in our quarterfinals. Very comfortable being on top. He, he wants to control that top position, land strikes, and go for submissions yeah, when they present themselves. Yeah, I mean, this is this looks exactly just like an MMA fight. You yeah, know, this is yeah. MMA approach yeah. right here that he's he's taking. I like what Hansi's doing there with the left leg. He was trying to pass, but now Pace able to. Get back to full guard. Looked like he was going for something there, Ben. Yeah, yeah he went high. Something will open, baby. Again, Hansen back in on the body strikes. Ooh, those are brutal. Yeah. 
Open guard here, Red four pace. Working from here. Another high Start guard working. here. There you go. A little right hand Campbell, by the baby. Team Tiger Shulman product. Again, TJ DeSantis, Kelvin Gastelum, Ben up. Saunders, Matt Side, Florentine Gardens, El Monte, oh, California. The first there. ever CJJ we'll World. Yeah, so now we can see some rubber guard implemented here. Yeah, he's and the doing snacks in there, Nick. Yeah, he's got that arm strike. Strike in there, too. What's open here? Now, Uma Plata, maybe? Oh. Yeah, there is an Uma Plata. Uh, he could also go for the arm. Yeah, yeah, um, right hand. Now he's going for the leg. Nick Pace trying to make something happen. Oh, now he's in on that leg. Nice use of the strike. Look at Hansen controlling the head there. Pace trying to get free. Hard, Beautiful left hand. These guys are going to war with the strikes here. Now Pace in on a leg. Three minutes left for these guys to work here. Now Hanstein in on the left leg of Pace. Oh. Does he have the control, Kelvin, of that left leg of Pace to actually torque it to where he could get a finish? Because he didn't really have much on it. No, he's got the other leg. Trying to go with that other ankle now. Now Pace trying to go out the back door. Hans might have control. Yeah. Thin, That's thin. Thin. Bridge, bridge. Yeah. Really taking his time, trying to make sure oh, that he looks shuts like down the offensive attack arm. here okay. of Hanstein. Pace being cool, but yep, he's out. He let go of it. Oh, nice bit of action here. Hanstein decided to bail on it. Credit to Nick Pace. He tried to get that Oma Plata. It induced a scramble. He got it on the leg of Hansen, but again, Nick is refusing to let up that top position, and now Hansen back to side nearly. And it showed the leg game in an MMA or a combat jiu-jitsu situation. It's, uh, it's a risky thing. coming. Now we see a spider web position here for Hansen. Feeds the leg through. Now trying to go hard in on it. Oh, beautifully done by Nick Pace. Control his posture. Control his posture. Hold his head, baby. Start climbing it up. Doing a double bag right there. There you go. There you go. Yeah, that's it. Swimming in. He's doing a meat hook. Nice meat hook tactic. If he can get more on his right hip. Credit to Nick Pace. He's been on bottom, but he hasn't been overwhelmed by strikes. He's definitely eaten some strikes. But he hasn't been, uh, you know, beaten up really in this position. Yeah, no, he's doing a good job controlling, uh, you know, for the most part, controlling uh, Nick Hansen from, from the bottom. Ooh. Ooh. And putting in a little bit of his, his own offense there. Hansen, though, trying to take advantage of the strikes by trying to pass. Less than a minute left. One minute, let's get, get your grips. Yes! Right. So our opening match Mount. of our Bantamweight Tournament. Yeah. Mount, right. triangle up coming here for Hansen. Yeah. Yeah. up, he has seconds. it. A lot of time here. Yeah. Oh, he's, he's switching it. Oh, oh. oh. Pace moving. Oh, oh. 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 Beautifully right. done. Right. That is what Jiu-Jitsu is all about. Beautiful, beautiful. I mean, these are high-level transitions in Jiu-Jitsu. Great, Nick. Yeah, good, good defense awareness. We are 15 seconds away from a very important overtime. Hanstein still trying to force the issue. Oh, going for the Kamara again. Rip it open. 10 seconds, Nick. Rip, rip, rip. Pull, pull, pull. I don't even know how you got out of the first one. That was good. There we go. 10 minutes in the books, headed to a very important overtime. These one-round overtimes in our quarterfinals, it's like a shootout. You want to go for that submission, but if you lose the position, your opponent, who goes on defense, can really ride out the time. In this format with the one overtime, I almost think that being on defense first gives you more information to know how you want to plan your attack in overtime. I don't think that's necessarily going to be the uh, case later in the tournament, but right now, almost being on defense, Ben, I think uh, benefits you in this one overtime only quarterfinal round. Again, yeah, it definitely could. Um but it's, it's interesting to see the strategies right now. Are people going to go for the strikes or are they going to go for uh, the submission? We see Pace now in the most dominant position he's enjoyed in the fight on the back of Hanstein. Nick Pace, we'll see what kind of game he has here taking Hanstein's back. Now, if you look here, Pace already lost one hook. Now he gets it back. Nice adjustment there. Three. Yeah, you got it. You're out. Keep going. Keep going. 
Pace definitely going for it. But now, if Haas is able to roll in now, he loses yep. the position. Now but no, but, he but he's not out because he goes right he into that arm control. triangle. If he didn't have that arm triangle, the overtime period, at least the offensive overtime period for Pace would be done. But right now, he's trying to wrap it up by submission. And yep. it looks tight. Can he finish from the mount still, or does he need to get off to the side? No, he can definitely finish he from mount. Yeah. Wouldn't this be an upset? Nick Pace He's trying tough, to stop He's the EBI CJJ champion. Keep working it, Nick. Keep, you know when you got it you got in, it. baby. Beautiful. And really, also, too, well, if he doesn't get the submission, he's riding out time here. This time is definitely adding up for Nick Pace. Answering the phone now is Honstein. Mm -hmm. if, you're, if you're Nick Honstein, how do you get out of this, Kelvin? Well, I remember being in this position not too long ago. But you got to get the arm over the on the other side of the head. I mean, you have to. Or be able to get... Um, Take Grab onto your knee here, baby. Take that another, telephone off. another defense to it. Now trying to move. Nice back. Oh, oh free. Nick Hostein avoids danger. Now he needs to make sure that he gets either a submission or holds on longer than Nick Pace held on. And Pace did have a, some good riding time. He did. He's tired now, Nick. So now what what, what exactly does uh, Hansen he need to do to be able to win? If he gets a submission, he will win. If he gets control time greater than Pace had, he will win. Nice. If Nick Pace is able to escape before time elapses, he will be the victor. Oh. Again, strikes allowed in overtime. That is not something that sure Nick Hansen had afforded to him in the first hips, CJJ tournament he found himself in. Yep. It's not like they're holding back either. I mean, they're throwing hard. And now Hansen wisely moves to that body triangle. Maybe not Ooh. necessarily where yes. the yes. weight he go, wants Nick. on his leg to Take be. Take a couple of those, Nick, and just... Yeah, he is on that side, now? but he feels confident you blast with out, it Nick. he put it there. Now the pace here of pace needs to quicken He's try to hold you for the because next minute. Come on, he Nick. has less than Eat 30 seconds, it sounds out. like, if he wants to win. He needs Nick, to get free. But also, too, he's got to get free, but he can't open himself up to submissions. If he gets stopped, then his night is done. Keep your yeah, he's got to be very Keep strategic about how, how he gets out of there. Oh, he's flattening him out. Head 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 he's out. He's Nick out. Pace victorious. Wow. He upsets no. Nick Hansen. I think Hansen got a little bit overzealous with the strikes. He went to MMA. <laughs> he went to MMA. I believe, I mean, we, we have a little bit of confusion here. I believe Nick Pace is victorious. One, one. I believe so. Yeah. We'll make it official. Bruce, Buff, Bruce Buffer will have the time. Oh, my God. He's and huge. the winner for the quickest escape in overtime, Nick. Richie Boy Pace. Nick Pace wow. upsets wow. the EBI CJJ champion. Nick Honstein's night is done. Wow. Ladies and gentlemen, this is what tournaments are all about. Anything can happen. Absolutely. What a fight. What a match. Nick Pace largely in bottom position throughout the regulation period. He goes on offense, and he steals one from Nick Honstein. Wow. Honstein, walk us through some of this action. I think he got yeah, a little bit over. He tried over to those. flatten him out use his strikes, but that gave Pace the, the space to be able to turn around and escape. The second, the yeah, the second he let go of the 5-0 the controller, the one-on-one -on -one to try to throw double palm strikes, he had no control to stop the mount, and he just rolls over, and now, he loses it. The difference between Nick Pace and, and Hansen going to mount, Pace had an arm triangle locked in when he went, so he allowed uh, himself more time, but Nick Hansen, Maybe a little overzealous with the strikes. His night is done. Nick yeah. Pace moves on to the semifinals of our Bantamweight tournament. That's one of the things about adding strikes is you open up to be able to strike and you, you give the guy space when you open up, you know? So that's what happened tonight. Up next in the Bantamweight bracket, 10 Planet Bethlehem's J.M. Holland meets Hens of Gracie Philly Black Belt, Sidemar Honorio. Straight ahead, it's Holland versus Norio. This is CJJ Worlds. And now, first up to the mat, representing 10th Planet Bethlehem, J.M. Holland.
and his opponent, representing Hensard Racing Academy. Sidebar, Psycho Honorio! Not exactly sure what happened there. Looked like J.M. Holland maybe forgot his mouthpiece. You see, uh, there he goes, he forgot his mouthpiece. Strikes are allowed, gentlemen, meet that mouthpiece. Yeah. There we go, J.M. Holland in the yellow rash guard, representing 10th Planet Bethlehem. Sidemar, Mario representing Team Henzo Gracie Philly. J.M. Holland was part of that inaugural Bantamweight CJJ tournament. So far for the veterans of that, hasn't been a good night. Nick Honstein already out. J.M. Holland wants to advance further than he did before. He ran into a tough Chad George Be ready. that March evening. Be ready for the snap. That wasn't a, that wasn't <laughs> a leg kick, that was a foot sweep. Yeah. Don't get excited, people. Well. That's, it's a thin line there, yeah, right? Yeah, it truly is. It is. <laughs> we'll see Wagner Hosha a little bit later on think? this evening. Oh, He's, mm -hmm. uh, he likes to make it a little bit grimy at times. <laughs> I like it. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's, it's combat sport. It's not supposed to be comfortable, right? Right, yeah, nice. absolutely. You have to get heavy with that collar time. TJ DeSantis, Kelvin Gastelum, Ben Saunders inside That's Florentine Gardens, our second matchup here of the Bantamweight right tournament. Guys feeling each other out. Now this is where it's different from the submission only rules. Neither man really necessarily wants to go for a takedown where they could end up in bottom. You know, they, 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 that top position a lot more important well, than I think the emphasis here. Now we see a little bit of debate here. Yeah, 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 it's, it's such a thin line to do. Uh, referee Jonathan Romero in charge of what is legal and what is not. All right, now strikes are legal. Oh, he, he did not waste any, any time coming in with the slap. What are, what are you looking for, hey? What we work? Right. What's there? What's there? Mario, you gotta it's Lando. You gotta make right right there. Down you gotta make a move. Right? You're either Ooh. going up under Holding or jacking that thin. lead leg. Right. Oh! oh. 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 Another left hand. Right. You gotta bring him down. You gotta bring him down. He ain't gonna, he's gonna this stay This is straight there. up round and pound, guys. That's it. Hey, keep that, keep up or down, uh, Another up or down. left hand there by the Henzo Gracie Black Belt. Come on, Jay, you gotta make a move. Don't sit there, Gosh. don't sit there. We're moving, we're another moving, right hand. we're moving. J.M. Holland really can't seem to figure out how hey, to get him like close here, it's, a, it's an issue for him. Yeah, hasn't really found his 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 rhythm yet. Nice, oh, beautifully yeah. hey, let's look done there, trying to induce that. a scramble. Is Holland, Holland nice. kind of egging him on a little bit, maybe trying to get into his head, Ben, maybe encouraging the strikes nice to where he hey, makes a mistake. Keep doing that, though. Sidemore is doing a phenomenal on, job of really just controlling move. this range, on, maintaining son, a solid son, base son, so he can't first, get under him. If he's on defense, he ain't swinging. And he really doesn't have to move because it's combat jujitsu. He can just blitz him from here. Oh. Able to get free of that leg grab there from Hollanders. Morio now another left hand. He's he's throwing him straight like a straight left. Yeah, JM's for sure trying to time it, but he's so quick. Yeah, keep going, keep going, get that clinch. We saw Holland in the pre-fight package. He he went inverted a lot. He tried to go inverted there, but Sidemar having none of it. Another left hand there. He's throwing them like straight. Yeah, and he's pulling it, he's retracting it, he's so there's jam. no counter really. He's, he's not leaving himself move. open. Him oh, oh. Holland's wrapping up that leg All right, now we're of Moria. Now he loses it. Well, he still has it wrapped up, but Sidemore now to the floor. Yeah, he's trying to go in. He's trying to go yep, deep yep. on that other oh, leg yeah. too. Let him get, okay, all right. Now the leg game is in play. Hey, hey let's look for a reversal right away. Sidemar has the left leg down, controlled of Holland. Four minutes into regulation here. Ah. Morio trying to get ah. top position again, landing more of those strikes. We could see a TKO by yeah. strikes today. Come on, Jam, we gotta a move. A for effort for Morio thus far in regulation. Move. Now moving to the body, beautiful right hand. Oh. 
He's doing good. Defense, man, but I want, I want to see a move. I want to see something. We got to move. Ugh. You saw right there, Holland, you know, forced to cover up every time now that Homorio even flinches, even Hard faints at these coming. strikes. Has to, has to. I mean, he's just getting blitzed. Hey, yeah, he jams his what? game let's as it comes, man, because he, he's in the let's fire right now table. on his back, not caring. He's trying to make something happen. Inversions. <laughs> Just trying to get a different look is Holland. Now some gamesmanship. Ooh. Hey, let's come, come up on that. Nothing playful about that come strike. Come up on that one. Come up on it. Come up on it. Mario moving to the body. Now really trying to nice. smash. Yeah, there we go. Holland now. Yeah. Holland maybe on the back. Oh my goodness. Damn Holland trying to make Mario pay. Nice. Now he's on top. Got a little bit of blood coming out of his yep. nose, it looks like. Oh, there will be blood, yes, indeed. Keep him down. Keep him oh, down. he's cut. No, no. It's a little down. cut under the, the eye. Yeah, under his left eye. Don't let him, this don't isn't let him. slap fighting, ladies and gentlemen. This is a straight up brawl. Our first ever hey. check by a doctor in combat jiu jitsu history. This is combat jiu jitsu. Hey. Have the doctor take a look at it. This is uh, a bit concerning for J.M. Holland. Good thing though, like mixed martial arts, this cut is underneath the eye. Yeah, it, it shouldn't, shouldn't affect much. Shouldn't inhibit the vision here. Take a look at it. But one thing, all right, here's here's some of the, the action here. Maybe this is what opened up the cut. Let's see what might have No, there's up. already blood. Oh, there his, you can see it on his, his knuckles, actually. Now we need to no pay way. attention. One thing to keep in mind here, the 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 cut stoppage here, if this fight continues, they should go back to the position they were in when the referee decided to separate the two. Which was standing at this point. Was right? it standing? Yeah, they just stood up and then they called them over to get it looked at. I got excited about the blood. Yeah. Good thing you're here to keep me in check, Ben. That's what I'm here for. I got excited too. <laughs> I mean, this is this is a straight-up fight. And one thing that J.M. Holland's got to be thinking about, too, is if he does advance, he has a cut now. And sometimes that can play. Oh, yeah. It could affect later on in the tournament. Absolutely. Sure. J.M. Holland trying to figure out how much time is left in regulation. These guys back on their feet. Hey, stay up a little bit. But you got to see the reversal, man. He was waiting to time an overcommitted strike yep. to get the sweep and end up on top. And he was able to do it. It just took a little longer than he probably thought. Also took a little out of him now that he has a cut as well. Yep. That, Ooh, oh. that, was, that was a strike. Camorio immediately put his hands up. He knew that he did wrong. Now, is there any repercussions for those kind of things? So if there is a foul and they go to overtime, there is a penalty added to their escape time. They've 30 seconds added to their escape time, which you really don't want that uh, no, put on you, especially no. in these overtime rounds that are only maximum Absolutely. three minutes. Absolutely. Yeah, that's huge. So, but a warning there by Jason Romero. Just like an MMA fight, one warning, next one will be a point now. I, I would assume. Right, keep coming forward on him then. We have a that's cut man here. Come forward. <laughs> Just the doctor. Just the doctor. See, yeah. now, now we see a... Memoria was contending that that was a slap, but the referee saying, no, he was just trying to get control of your head. Hmm. There really is a fine line. And one thing I think is going to be hard for these fighters from you know going to the floor where strikes are illegal and the back of the feet, you're already in that striking mindset. Yeah. Especially some of these MMA fighters. Sidewalk. You know, they're, they're, they're just uh, reacting off instinct. All right, now we see a double underpass here attempted by Hey, get that high and ready to go. I mean, safe to I say that Sidebar Memorial might be back, combat back, back, first walk round of back, back. I mean, this guy is yeah. bringing the punishment. Oh, yeah, you Shoot can totally tell this guy fought around. MMA, you know. But again, man, it's because JM's going for it and pulling guard and going to his back. So at least he, I mean, hey, JM, let's the action is because of him. Pocket. Let's go. Memorio has yeah, fought the King of the Cage in the past, so he does have MMA experience. And he's definitely calling All upon right, him here tonight. He got two and a half. You know, he, 230, 230. the action is because of him, but he's kind of getting the, yes. end, the bad end of that action. He is. But I'm sure the, the fans are now. loving it. <laughs> yeah. It's Amorio. I don't know if he's uh, tired. He's had a lot of offensive output here. 
touch over two minutes remain in regulation. A little reset here, back to the center. Two minutes. If you're J.M. Holland, Kelvin, what do you do here? Because playing the, the, the game where you're on your back is just, it, it's not a long-term option. Yeah, I mean, you need to switch up your game plan, switch up your strategy if you want to continue in this tournament. And, uh, you know, maybe shoot a, shoot a takedown, get on top, and, and start working your game. But he's not looking yeah. like he wants to get on top. Wolf Guard again now trying to get in on Keep a going. leg. Keep going. Keep going. another right hand. Keep, really keep, selling keep, off keep with moving. this leg Back is Holland. Mario now throwing 30. some more strikes, 90 seconds. We're in a lot of real estate here, so. What do you think about it, Jackie Chan? I mean, if 30. this was points, JM would be losing, but there is no points. Right, and he's about 90 seconds away from potentially having a dominant position for the first time in the fight. He I had think a brief it's, dominant position, but he, he lost it. So. I think it's interesting how he's pulling guard, because he's, he's using a different tactic. Instead of getting full guard with like an overhook, He's, he's pulling guard and then going what looks like for uh, an inversion to, or Imanari roll leg lock attempt. 60 seconds left here for these men to do work. Hey, put the mini stomp in, kick his leg out. Tell us what you think on Twitter. Join the conversation at TJ DeSantis, at Kelvin Gastulum, at Ben Saunders MMA, hashtag CJJ World. 45. Moria landing some more strikes, he disengages. See that blood flowing? An open-handed uppercut, right. I think, there by Hamoria. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Holland really trying to, to work that front leg, trying to yeah. make something happen. Goes Roll inverted harder. again. All right, hey. Induce a scramble, able to get seconds. back to his feet, so now he's at least out of the danger of strikes. 10. Dying moments Three. here of regulation. J.M. Holland <laughs> bloody. Found himself in a war. Side overtime. Mario now headed to overtime, but a lot of damage done. Flip of the coin. Let's it drop, does Jason Romero. It is tails. Oh, we're gonna flip it again. I think he kind of half caught it, so. Redo on the coin flip. JM wins. Yep, Holland getting the nod here. Only one round here of overtime. Holland consulting his coach, Eddie Bravo. Yeah, that's one thing to keep in mind here. Normally, Eddie Bravo and, and Victor Davila find themselves as referees. They will not be referees here tonight. Not tonight. The sanction by the California Amateur Mixed Martial Arts Organization. Holland sure right. elects to take the back. Right. One overtime period here, so, you know, riding, riding time can really go a long way in the early uh, overtime periods here. So let him get his uh, Absolutely. Right. I mean, this is, this right is right part right of the away. rules why, right why it makes the EBI yeah. rule so special is the Squeeze overtime. Him, Squeeze him, baby. Holland on the body triangle, very smart of him yep. to get that. Hey, yep. hey. Again, Stay if you're used to combat jujitsu, yep. there has been a rule change. Strikes are allowed in yep. overtime. Fight nice jam. Yep. Squeeze that body We've just seen it actually nice go against jam. people when yep. they do it yep. in overtime. Yep. People get out. Yep. Yep. Uh, keep that. Let's put that. Yes, nice. Yep. Nice jam. On Beautiful the chin goes. there is Holland. Don't lose that grip. Keep turning. Camorio looks pretty comfortable. Doing we saw it earlier Stay tonight, our prelims. They win it. Just because it's I not underneath it. the, the chin doesn't mean it's not dangerous. Absolutely not. If you get that forearm in right around the chin or the jaw, it could break. Nice, J.M., yep. Yeah. Colin now trying to land some strikes, yep. trying to readjust Stay his grip. Stay on his back. Stay on it, baby. He's not liking that, J.M. Stay on it. really tried to Stay almost bait him into a mount, but yep. nice, Colin was able to fight off yep. that instinct because if he Reset, went to mount and didn't have a, a submission, yep. 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 he'd lose his offensive period here, but time yep. ticking keep away put, for J.M. Keep putting that on his face, J.M. Keep putting that on right Banking up that right ride mouth. time. Yeah, originally Sotmar was doing a good job. He was rotated to the uh, the triangle yep. side, and it looked like he was attempting Watch to push on the knee to create enough triangle. pressure on the ankle sure. to pop it open, Squeeze but it did yep. not work. Yep. Nice. 
That's and look at the JM. pain there, Peace grimacing. Is Hamorio. Oh, beautiful. wow. Holland able yes. to stay on it. Now he's oh. trying to get the crush. Yes, JM. Oh, Hamorio in some Please. trouble. Oh. We saw it earlier. He could have it. JM. JM. Trying to move him Finish on to the semifinals. Boom. Yes, JM. JM. Yes. Yes, baby. Go back to it. Fix it. Fix it. Nice, JM. Beautiful, get beautiful. Out of some danger. You got a minute left, JM. Keep the that minute left time. in this overtime yes. period. Squeeze that body triangle, baby. You're doing great. Did a smart move, Keep swapping going. the body triangle to the other side. Yep. Hey, only hit a few. Mario was in complete control the throughout the fish. regulation period, but now he's been feeling it being on defense here in this overtime. 40 seconds, JM. Yeah, there really needs to be a little bit more of a sense yep, of urgency. A nice. Oh, there yeah. it is. Deep on oh, yeah. that Damn. crush Please. is J.M. Holland. Please, baby. Memorial trying to tough his way Body through triangle. it. Body hip in, hip in. Or hey, or just hold him for a couple seconds, almost over. You're a almost full there. A three-minute overtime Squeeze ride it. for J.M. Holland would be it. huge. Don't Ooh, lose he's it. He's going to flatten him out. Trying to flatten him out. 10 seconds, 10 seconds, J.M. This has been a huge, yes. Yes. huge move. A switch of momentum for J.M. Holland. Three minutes. Now all J.M. Holland needs to do to advance to the semifinals is escape. Beautiful work. Battered and bloodied, J.M. Holland finds himself really in a lot of ways, guys, in, in the, the trenches, control. basically. In the trenches right now. Now we see some tactics here. Oh, spider web. He wants to go in spider web. Let him get his grip. Not a bad position at all. He's got to get his mouthpiece in. Hey, we're coming up. Don't let him break. Now we'll see if strikes are just going to go immediately into play here. Hey, let him sit. He's got to sit up. He's got to sit up. He's got to sit up. So he's, he's got to he's got to weave his hand. Okay. There we go. So now immediately. Yes, trying to get out is J.M. Holland. Yeah, throw your hips out. Throw your hips out. J.M. Hips Mario far away. Hips far away from the body. He needed to battle the legs throw there legs of back. Holland. Hips far away. Come on. Yes. Keep going. Oh, the arm's oh, extended. Oh. Tap. It's a tap. Side for Mario on his way to the semifinals. Yeah, man. This guy is game. Yeah. Battered, bloody, and ultimately defeated is J.M. Holland. Like I said, expect the unexpected. We saw so much momentum move throughout that fight. Yeah. It was all Hamorio and regulation at the top of the first overtime. It was all J.M. Holland. And then the Henzo Gracie product surges back and finishes it in the bottom of the first and only overtime. To make it official, here's Bruce Buffer. Ladies and gentlemen, we have a winner by armbar in overtime. Sidebar, Ico. Honorio! The Psycho draws blood at Combat Jiu Jitsu Sidemar Honorio on his way to the semifinal rounds. Honorio, oh, I'm gonna keep my eye on that guy. I mean he was he was he was game tonight. Yeah, yeah keep your eye it. on him, oh, Kelvin, because he'll, he'll, he'll bloody you up if, if you don't. <laughs> my goodness. See some of this action. Ben, walk us through the finish. Oh, he pushed it. That's what he did. He pushed oh, the elbow yeah. up, then he tried to do, oh, he tried to do the corkscrew get out, but nope. Unfortunately, he was too quick with the tightness of his hips. Sh shutting that escape down. J.M. Holland put a lot of work in overtime. Looked like he was in control, but this is the first. Mario. This is the first uh, spider web, right? With combat jujitsu from here? This is the first one with, uh, overtime with strikes. Yeah. So. Sidemore Hamorio making it count. He moves on in the first ever CJJ Worlds Tournament. Big man, bro. More action in the Bantamweight division. Right now, this is CJJ Worlds. Making the move to combat jiu-jitsu is Arena MMA's Barrett Yoshida. He'll meet Mid-City MMA representative Sheridan Moran. On deck, it's Yoshida versus Moran. This is Combat Jiu-Jitsu Worlds. And now, 
Hall. First to the bat for this contest, representing Arena MMA, Barrett Yoshida! And his opponent, representing Mid-City MMA, Sheridan Moran. EBI 11 veteran Sheridan Moran takes on Barrett Yoshida. The 42-year-old Yoshida versus the 30-year-old Sheridan Moran. The accolades for Barrett Yoshida, honestly, too many to list here. Immediately drops. Moran trying to take a leg with him. Yeah, Barrett Yoshida, probably one of the most experienced guys in this tournament. I mean, he's got a tons of experience in MMA, in Jiu-Jitsu, high, high-level guy. Yeah, beautiful Jiu-Jitsu. Yoshida, you know, making that move to, to CJJ tonight, but like you said, no stranger to having strikes thrown his way. Now a lot of go. strikes being thrown his way by Sheridan Moran. Moran again on the leg here. We've seen many, many people going on his legs. He just slips out. Yoshida very calm, comfortable, composed. Now he's going in on, yeah, on, on he's trying to counter it. Yoshida, an EBI veteran, seen him plenty of times in that tournament structure. He wanted to test himself. He's really tested the leg there, Sheridan Moran. Look at Sheridan Moran working through it. Clear that knee. Able to clear the leg for the most part is Moran. Now he's free. Battle for position there, but running out of real estate. Get a restart here by Mike Beltran. Mike Beltran to control the action there. It's good stuff. That was a beautiful, successful guard pull. Not something you see often in mixed martial arts, the guard pull. We've seen it a few times here tonight, and I, I think that speaks a lot to the composure of Barry Yoshida. He he wants his fight on the floor, even if he's on bottom. Says a lot about him, says a lot about his confidence and his skills. <laughs> Yoshida <laughs> smiling a little bit, slapping the ear. That'll really mess uh, a fighter's equilibrium up if they box the ears like that. Absolutely, you rattle the brain. Rock the guy, who knows what Yeah, you now. can pop the eardrum. Easy, super easy with that. Rubber guard now here for Yoshida. You, you cannot slam your opponent. Moran, keen to that rule, not, uh, not doing anything here that he shouldn't be. But Yoshida smothering him here. This uh, reminds me of uh, Nino Shembre and Sakuraba back in Pride, hug hugging him like a koala. <laughs> At what point, Kelvin, does Yoshida let go of this? Because he might be gassing his arms, hugging him like this. Well, he, was, he was trying to submit him, actually. There was a choke there that he was going for, but yeah, he got out. There you go, there you go, there you go. There you go. Oh, so Moran trying to make a count in on the That's head of Yoshida. Some heavy ground and pound there. Moran, very calm here. Looked like he was going to try to strike the body, but didn't feel comfortable with his position. Now trying to clear the leg. Yoshida in on the left leg of Moran. Yeah, I really like Yoshida's clinch game, though, because he's not really told here by Moran. There you go. Now some nice strikes with the left hand. Go, Barrett. Push, push, push. Same time. A lot of technical work here on the floor. Yeah, a lot of transitioning going on. Moran posturing up. <laughs> CJJ Worlds won here tonight. Appreciate you joining us, TJ DeSantis, Kelvin Gastelum, Ben Saunders. Matt's side inside Florentine Gardens.
This is our third quarter finals of our Bantamweight tournament. Don't forget the lightweights headed your way. Still got the lightweights. There you go. Going for that leg again. Yeah, we worked. That's clear. There you go, Bert. Yep. Yep. Now Yoshida trying to reverse okay. position. Yeah. Yeah. Nicely done by the 42-year-old Barry Yoshida. Yeah, he's coming in with a little ground and pound of his own. Moran now trying to clear the legs in this scramble. Try to secure side. The arm triangle is there. Halfway through this endurance round. Five minutes, Barry. Five minutes. Let's go. Short little left hand. Not much on it. Yeah, Moran not really able to land strikes hard here because he can't really separate. He can't make space. If he does, he's going to lose control of his position. That's right. It's one of these. That's what the thing that adds more uh, complexity. <laughs> Is that yeah, even a word? Yeah, for sure. Uh, to the um, to the match here. You know, you you open up to to strike. You give your opponent uh, just a little bit enough room to to slip in another hook. Yoshida's oh, where he is control. right now because he tried to open up with strikes and got swept again right here on his back. Looks like Moran trying to think about attacking that back. arm triangle. The right arm, not where Yoshida wants it to be in this position. We'll see if there's more to this. It looks like Moran trying to circle. Oh, he's posting I mean, up in a leg. In MMA, I mean, you would want to get an underhook there with your right arm. Look to get up or reverse. Yoshida trying to block the mount there with his knee. Now, I like how he's covering up. He clearly trained very well for this to be covered up in all his movements because we're not seeing him get super blasted from his back in this match. There you go. Just about seven minutes into regulation. Whoa. Watch the leg, Andrew. Yoshida really comfortable left. having these strikes three thrown minutes. at him. It's not getting rattled like uh, you know some of the other fighters that have been hit a few times. Yoshida, a guy who's been grappling and, and fighting and training his whole life, he's, he's really at home. Yeah, yeah, I mean, it doesn't seem to phase him at all. He gets a little bit slapped. Ooh. Oh, I want to echo throughout Florentine Gardens. Don't forget the Eddie Bravo Invitational nice. returns Watch with that. EBI Watch 14. Right the leg. Absolutes, December 3rd, available at yeah. UFC. Fight Pass, and of course, inchbyinch.tv. Gordon Ryan looks to repeat as the absolute champion. Austin, Texas, on it, Jim. DJ DeSantis, Ben Saunders, Kelvin Gastelum. Train coming through, Elmani. Yeah. <laughs> is that right above us or that something? sounded yeah, like, like it. What is that? We'll see if Moran can clear these legs of Yoshida. Trying oh, to wow. do so, trying to open yeah. him up with some shots. That was nice. I like that. A little bit of, to the body and into the head. Two minutes, Barry. Two minutes. Some left hands there by Yoshida. Oh, that was a good one. I think Barrett is 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 gonna be complacent with just going to the overtime. Oh, you good? A little. It's not a lot of a uh, sense of urgency coming from him. You know, he's familiar with that overtime format, not necessarily with strikes, but maybe he thinks he has an advantage if he goes there. Unfortunately for Yoshida, if that is the plan, he's not going to get paid. Right. You only get paid if you win this tournament and do so by stoppage in regulation. Watch Inverted now is Barrett Watch Yoshida. Moran trying to stay cool and composed. Now trying to pass. Doing a good job stacking them. Yeah, the pressure has been put 15. on here with strikes, but also position on the floor when Moran is on top. He's really Moran. not letting Yoshida move or breathe, trying to keep him close. No, and Yoshida One keeps minute. going for the leg, so he's being super controlled, keeping the pressure tight and raining down these strikes. Yoshida firing back a little bit. Yep. Not the most 
strong strikes, but they made Moran move, and, and that's some space that I think Yoshida wanted to get back. Yes. Thirty seconds. Thirty seconds here. Thirty seconds. Here. 30 seconds. Yeah. Don't Tumbling up. Trouble. He strikes his Moran. Gotta think. I mean, the competitors might be having fun here. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that was a good one. Oh yeah. Anything you can do, I can do better. Is what Sheridan Moran is thinking. Fifteen seconds. Fifteen seconds. Trying to give him back hard. Beautiful right hand by Sheridan Moran. Now again, getting close. Throw it. Full guard now for Yoshida. Wow, 10 minutes of fury. It's a lot of palm strikes to the ear in this one. It reminded me last, you know, on Saturday when, when Joe Lozon was trying to recover that whole time, just getting blasted. Yeah. Didn't even know he was out. Flip of the coin here. Yoshida going to be given the opportunity to choose. It looks like he's going to go on offense first. He will take the back of Sheridan Moran. I think this might have been uh, Yoshida's plan the whole time to get to the overtime, get in the dominant position and submit him, move on to the next round. And we talk about the money. You do not bank any money for yourself if you win in overtime, but the prestige. Ultimately, if you can't get Absolutely. the win, you're not going to you know, get that title fight. Cover that. And uh, for Barry Yoshida right now, he's trying to stick to his strategy. Tight on that neck. Tight on that neck. He's on it. Finish it. Oh, Sheridan Moran in trouble. Finish it. Finish it. Finish trying to get a finish. Put that elbow up. Oh, Sheridan Moran gets free. Nice. That looked deep. That looked scary for Sheridan Moran. But ultimately, he will go on offense now. And he just needs to ride it out longer than he was in that organ of submission, of course. But Sheridan Moran in a nice position to move on to the semifinals. So now Yoshida has to escape quick very yes. very quickly if his plan was yeah if his plan was to go to the the Don't overtime i gotta i gotta give him props for going to his back as much as he did and make it an exciting round <laughs> yoshida just needs he definitely to get didn't free. just yeah keep time is running out yeah thread it thread it now an adjustment here 10 seconds left for Barry Yoshida to keep go, go, his go, tournament go, go, hopes go. alive. Sheridan Moran on his back. That's a wrap. Sheridan Moran on his way. Gets it done. To the semifinals. Props to the veteran, That's Barry a big Yoshida. Win. That's a yeah, big win over is. Yoshida. But this first round matchup belongs to Sheridan Moran to make it official, Bruce Buffer. And we have a winner by fastest escapes in overtime, Sheridan Moran. Sheridan Moran moving on to the semifinals, getting it done against a savvy veteran in Barrett Yoshida. He put in a lot of work in regulation and ultimately put in just a little bit better work in overtime. Kelvin, yeah, walk us he, through some of this action. He pressed the action most of the time, and here he is grabbing the back of Yoshida. Trying to sink that rear neck and choke him until the time stopped. Then he wins. Time not on his side. Sheridan Moran on his way to the semifinals. You're watching Combat Jiu Jitsu Worlds. And Chad the Savage George continues his combat jiu jitsu career when he meets Nathan Trepignier, representing Academy of Martial Arts. On the way, it's Chad the Savage George. Meeting Nathan Trepignier. This is Combat Jiu Jitsu Worlds. First up to the mat, representing California Mixed Martial Arts, Chad Savage Gar. His opponent representing the Academy of Martial Arts, Nathan Deathray Kopechnia. Come on, 
Our final quarterfinal matchup of the evening, WBC veteran Chad the Savage George taking on Nathan Trappignier. Chad George found himself in the finals of the first ever Bantamweight CJJ tournament against Nick Honstein. Unfortunately for George, he was suffering from a rib injury that night. He is back tonight. He has a point to prove here. He feels that healthy he can win this, Kelvin. He's moving well. Got a little bit of swag on him. You know, he looks fresh. He looks ready to go tonight. And we're talking about a guy, Ben, who has fought in the WEC on national television, fought in Bellator, pulled off a Von Flu choke there. If anybody is comfortable with the bright lights, it's Chad George. No, it definitely is. And if you're coming in not injured with a, with a rib injury, you're definitely going to have your head in the right uh, state of mind to go for the win every time. No, I mean, he looks fired up tonight. Moving well. Smiling. Yeah. There's a lot of fans here inside Florentine Gardens for the Savage as well. Smacked him in the face standing. Trapagnier kind of looking at him like, what are you complaining about? He didn't think that was dirty, but I don't know if it was an eye poke or just a, a shot. He, Chad George maybe, definitely. Yeah, it was either an attempted collar tie or a strike. Trapagnier now apologetic. There you go. Back in action. Trapagnia very frantic with his motions here. Roll that top, use that under Chad. Run, run, yeah, Chad George got that really heavy wrestling base there. You gonna trip that all day. Nice. Ooh, beautiful oh, reverse oh, there. Trapagnia was trying Great to Great misdirection, get your hands off the mat. The action, but Good. George Watch was savvy and wise to it. It's in the top position. There you go, nice. Good, beautiful, beautiful. Chad, yes, 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 yes,
lightweight tournament at 155 pounds. All combat bouts are sanctioned by Camo. Introducing first to the mat, representing Magna Rocha Martial Arts, none other than Magna Rocha! And his opponent, representing Grindhouse Jiu-Jitsu, Mikey Maniac Sindler! Time for the lightweights to take center stage. Mikey Zindler meeting Wagner Hosha. Hosha was in the finals just a few weeks ago at EBI. Ah! Came up short to Gary Tonin. This is an exciting matchup. You have Zindler, who is 8-0 as an amateur in mixed martial arts, fighting a guy who's fought in the UFC, Calvin. This is where the prospects huge, meet the veterans. Huge opportunity for him, huge chance for him to prove himself uh, here tonight against Wagner Hosha. I mean, this is a huge, huge uh, opportunity for him. Here you go, Mikey. All right, gentlemen, first round. Good fight. Good fight. Let's go. The veteran ref, oh. Mikey Oh, Jesus. Mikey Zindler, sorry, no, trying to do a spear. Hey. Oh, yeah. hard right hand by Wagner Hosha. The right atmosphere there. inside Florentine yeah, Gardens yeah, is electric. Yeah. Hosha on top night. of Zindler. Early night. Yeah, I mean, these guys did not waste any time. My goodness. <laughs> Zindler now trying to go they inverted, wrap heavy, up the leg here of Hosha. Oh, now he's got. Hosha trying to get away, almost free. Find your guard, honest. Mikey. Keep him honest. Look how relaxed Wagner is. Mikey Zindler <laughs> tried to turn himself into a human missile. <laughs> yeah, he's he's much like his hair. It's a little wild. Yeah, he's fired up. Yeah. Ah. Clear that foot. It's been wild yeah, inside the Florentine is. Gardens. Now, Hosha trying to get wild he's with the right it. hands. Let him hit you, Mikey. <laughs> yeah, I don't think Mikey uh, cares about getting hit in the face. Go. He smiled when he got slapped. Stay on the subs, Mikey. Stay, Stay on the subs. Stay into him. Find your guard. Dr. Hosha has a very grinding and oh. gritty style. You know that's only going to <laughs> intense here. Now Zindler. I think this style that's plays really well there into, into Wagner Hosha's game. Yeah. Oh, definitely. You just keep barreling in. Eventually, you're going to be in a try. position. Hosha is very much a pressure fighter when it comes to grappling. In combat jiu-jitsu, he's kind of a smash and pass kind of guy. He opens up and and, and Guard he's trying Guard. to put that pressure on Zindler. But to Zindler's credit thus far, Kelvin, I think he's really comfortable. He's not he's not letting Hosha get to him where Hosha does get to other fighters mentally a little bit. <laughs> No, not at all. He doesn't seem phased by by Hosha or or, or or anything like that. I mean, he seems like he's fired up. Stop. Running out of back space. Out of Mikey. Now back on the feet. We'll see what's in the eyes up his uh, sleeve. A little less space to run after him here. So inside. Trying to push him away is Zindler. Just pushing. Yeah, he's like, he's like, is he kicking me? Yeah, I mean. I guess we'll call it making space. Sit him down. It's a foot on the hip. There it is. That's it. And uh, one Mike, that Wagner Hosha now takes advantage of. Yeah, Third guard. Don't sit in between. Oh, hey. Hard right hey. hand again by Hosha. Again. That's it. Find your Zindler now. Nice, Mikey, stay on. Again, uh, trying to attack that. Go, go. Left leg of Hosha. He's in on it deep. That's it. Yeah, Hosh just Go got static on the next line. Go up with it and static. He seems so comfortable. Right there. Being yeah. here. Right there. Look at the You're arm. You're good. Fight the hands. Hosh is trying to get the backs in. They're not allowing him to do so yet. <laughs> top game, top pressure here of Hosha on display. Control, control. Look at that. He's now trying to get the back. You're good. You're good. You're good. Look at Zindler almost doing a somersault to get Go out. Back yeah. Nice. Right, back to the leg. Back to the leg. Find your dominant position. Clear that wrist, Mikey. There you go. Up. Crazy get wild on, scrambles here. Yeah. That's it. Mikey, take up. Yeah, no shortage of action here. His hands guard it, guard it. His face is free. Close it. Osha trying to make some space here. Maybe get free from Zindler. Zindler Hurt having me. none of it. Again on that left leg. You can see that. You're not going to break Wagner's not even breathing static. hard. 
He's super calm. Drop the hammer on him. Controlling his breathing. When we're talking about a guy who, you know, did a lot of work, did a lot of work in yeah, overtime Mike, at the last EBI. Back, and Wagner it, yeah, Rocha, roll it. Nice. He's ready Keep to go. Rolling. We know that cardiovascularly, he's he's in great shape. Yeah, he's in good shape always. Turn it. Was put in a lot of bad positions it in the went last to tournament. Out. Yep. Went to overtime plenty of times and just was able to, to stick right, to right. his guns. Crushing the hips. Elbow in. Elbow in, there you go. Now putting more pressure in top position is Hosha. That's right. Get the finish. That's it. Straight to mount. Let him feel it. Mount. He's trapped Full now. mount now Get here for the Brazilian. We'll take the back. Follow it. Clear it, clear it, Mikey. Nice. Six. Where's the control? Oh, now oh, underneath the chin, chin maybe. Yeah. There's a tap. Oh, he's got the oh, He has submission. Rear naked choke in the quarterfinals. Nice sign of respect by Mikey Zimbler, who was incredibly game. He gave Wagner Hosha everything he had, but it's Hosha who gets it done. He moves on to the semis to make it official. Bruce Buffett. And we have a winner at four minutes, 31 seconds by rear naked choke, Wagner Rocha! Wagner Hosha gets it done in regulation. Rear naked choke stoppage of Mikey Zindler. Credit to Mikey Zindler for stepping up. He he was wild and crazy. Ben, walk us through the end here, though, because Hosha finally gets it done. He was able to get the back. Man, watch how quickly he gets this. Right under the chin, oh. and then immediately, he's already there. Look, he's already tapping. Immediate. Beautiful technique. A veteran of mixed martial arts, EBI standout Rafael Domingos joins the lightweight bracket representing Demi and Maya Jiu-Jitsu. Tonight, he faces a leg lock specialist in Jason Hayden representing Gracie Fishhawk. This is Combat Jiu-Jitsu Worlds. First up to the mat, representing Demi and Maya Jiu-Jitsu, Rafael Domingos! And his opponent, representing Gracie Fishhawk, BJJ, Jason Hayden! Fourth quarter final action here in a lightweight tournament. The 25-year-old Jason Hayden meeting the 28-year-old Rafael Domingos. I remember Domingos from past DBI competitions. He is nasty. Yeah, he's a Great jiu-jitsu. He's trained with Damian Maya, spent a lot of time with Zenith jiu-jitsu and Robert Drysdale in Las Vegas. Rocking a 10th planet rash guard tonight. Yeah, Sweden, Stockholm. Hayden found his way into jiu-jitsu after giving up high school football. This one uh, might uh, remind himself of uh, some high school football, some hard hitting action maybe headed his way. Domingos, veteran of mixed martial arts, seven and two pro record. Ooh, nice little dive there at the leg by Hayden. And you feel each other out on the feet. Eddie just told me that he's wearing the Sweden Stockholm Rash Guard. Oh, oh. Because he's making a transition to uh, 10 Planet Stockholm, Sweden out there. Yeah, that's the thing about martial arts, it can really be a journey and take you all over the world. Nice bit of action, Domingos. He's been a, a bit of a nomad going all over the place, yeah. getting some training in uh, Sweden, the next des destination. It's beautiful, wow, nice. There. With Magnus. His left hand there by Domingos. Hayden gets back to his feet. Nice little ankle pick there. Oh, nice. Oh. Get on the hat. 
Yep. Yep. Domingo's no, trying to net the position count. Lace Aiden in on a leg. Up, lace up, lace up. Reverse is right there. Reverse. Domingo's. Find the reverse, Jay. Paying close attention we here. Find the reverse. Yeah. This attempt. Put it outside. To your right. To your right. Jason right Hayden. Let's finish it. There we go. Oh, he's going deep on that. Oh! oh. And it's done. Jason Hayden. The yeah. leg lock. Unbelievable. Now immediately wow. showing some respect, making sure that Domingo's is OK. but. Oh my goodness, guys, wow. you gotta call that an upset. With all the Ooh. experience that Domingos has, a huge victory in regulation. Yeah, no, that's a huge win over Rafael Domingos. I mean, he's EBI finalist. Jason Hayden victorious to make it official. Here's Bruce Buck. We have a winner at one minute, 36 seconds. My heel hook, Jason Hayden. And for Jason Hayden, Stopping a former EBI finalist in Rafael Domingos. Kelvin, you got to walk me through this because this was lightning quick. Domingos paid attention to this leg lock, huge, but he couldn't solve it. Huge win. I mean, you see him ankle pick, tripped him. And then you see Hayton working to go to the legs right away. Right away, he's looking, looking for one. He, did, he doesn't have anything quite yet here. Then once he goes deep into the ankle, transitions right there and cranks it. Oh! Tenth Planet Black Belt Submission Specialist Nathan Orchard gets his shot in the 155 pound division as he faces the MMA fighter Samson Fomabout, representing Absolute MMA. This is CJJ Worlds. And first up to the bat, representing 10th Planet Portland, Nathan Orchard. And his opponent, representing Absolute MMA, Samson Fomabal. It is the former EBI finalist Nathan Orchard representing 10th Planet Portland, meeting Absolute MMA's Samson Fumabout. TJ DeSantis, Kelvin Gastelum, Ben Saunders. What's that name again? Fumabout? Samson Fumabout. Fumabout. Orchard moving over to combat jujitsu here tonight. He would love to represent that 10th Planet flag all the way to the finals. Big fan of Orchard. I mean, he brings it every single time. He's got a win over Eminari. He's got that dead Orchard that we've seen on display. And his MMA experience for sure is going to hold up really well here in combat jiu-jitsu. Let us know what you're thinking tonight. On Twitter, at TJ DeSantis, at Ben Saunders MMA, at Kelvin Gastelum. Use that hashtag at CJJ Worlds. If you watch the last EBI and watch Orchard, man, he put up some of the best fight of the nights that time, that night. Yeah, I mean, he went, and he went far into the tournament until he ran into Wagner Hosha, and yep. Hosha, a guy that's not oh. fun to grapple. Now, Nathan Orchard not fun to grapple. On the back, Samson Fumabout in trouble, just one minute into regulation. This is a wealth of time for Nathan Orchard to work. You got time, you got lots of time. A lot of time for Nathan Orchard to work. Don't forget he has body strikes triangle. available to him. Trying to switch to a body triangle, he's got it. Try and clear that hand. Thumb to the chin, thumb to the jaw, thumb to the jaw. Just gonna look to sink that in under the chin or over the jaw. Yeah, we've seen that crush here a few times tonight. It's played well for a few of our fighters. Switching sides to the body triangle is Orchard. Oh. There's in on the crush. Samson was doing a good job of creating the uh, the ankle pressure, but Orchard just swapped it over to the other side. It shows the veteranship here of Orchard. Ooh. Yeah. Oh. Orchard really, you know, being calculated with his strikes. We've seen some guys get a little too aggressive and fall off of dominant positions. Now Orchard in on that submission attempt. 
Yes, you gotta push your hip. Follow the body, no, follow the belly down. We've seen it work tonight. It's an orchard in deep on a hard to see if it's under the chin here. Thumb about trying to peel the hand away. You gotta keep that two on one. Mike Beltran right there. Such a cool experience. Combat Jiu Jitsu World's number one here tonight. Oh, Lomas look right there. There it is. Nathan Orchard, victorious. He is over Samson Fumabout. A big win, a very important win. He moves on and he does it very quickly. Nathan Orchard making work happen. In the quarterfinals here on his way to the semis to make it official, Bruce Buffer. And the winner at two minutes, 35 seconds, by rear naked choke, Nathan Orchard. These lightweights know that they only get paid if they get stoppages in regulation. And Nathan Orchard continues that trend here. He gets a rear naked choke stoppage over Samson Fumabout. Kelvin, walk us through some really great action here by Orchard. Beautiful, beautiful triangle, uh, body triangle done. And he was looking to uh, sink that rear naked choke that whole time he had his back. There he is trying to strike to open up that, that choke. And there it is, he has it over the jaw. Not quite under the chin, over the jaw. But he gets it done tonight. Patient was orchard from about. Tried to do everything he could to get free, including throwing some strikes at orchard. He was trying to peel the hand, doing everything he could to be defensive here and get free. But unfortunately for him, his night is over. Nathan Orchard. He is on his way to the semifinals at Combat Jiu-Jitsu Worlds, getting the tap in regulation here over Samson Fumabout. More action. This is Combat Jiu-Jitsu. Rounding out the first round of our lightweight tournament is UFC veteran Tyson Griffin. Tonight, he makes his Combat Jiu-Jitsu debut against the submission hunting MMA fighter, James Gonzalez, representing Matt Serra, Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. First up to the mat, representing Performance Fitness and MMA, Tyson Griffin. And his opponent, representing Sarah, Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, James Speedy Gonzalez. Yeah. The 27-year-old James Gonzalez meets the 33-year-old Tyson Griffin. Our final quarterfinal matchup of our lightweight tournament. He's 27, he's, he's got a huge opportunity in front of him to face Tyson Griffin. I mean, one of the greats in the UFC. I mean, he's got a long history in WC and UFC, so expect to see some action from Tyson Griffin. So Gonzalez trying to get a takedown here on Griffin. Griffin in top position, but immediately defensive, trying to get free from the offense here of Gonzalez. Knee free, get the knee free. Tyson Griffin has a win Keep over oh. no, no. Rafael Dos Anjos. Look at him. He, he, the, the slaps don't phase him one bit. I mean, Tyson is, has been hit by some of the, the hardest fighters, hitters in mixed yes. martial arts. So, oh, yeah. I mean, that composure. But at the same time, he's got to make sure that he doesn't, you know, eat too many of those strikes. He's Absolutely. in top position, though. Probably want to give a few back if you're Tyson Griffin right now. Oh, yeah. Watch the triangle. Oh, nice. Pressure forward, shoulder pressure down. Got to thank the official sponsor of Combat Jiu-Jitsu, West Coast Cure. Keep the Find them him. Let him at move. westcoastcure.com. Uh, there we go. The bass coming, bass coming. Tyson Griffin now being nice. patient. You know, Gonzalez has been on bottom here, Ben, but he's been really offensive as he uh, has made Tyson Griffin react a bit more than I think uh, Tyson's wanted to. He hasn't been able to secure a position much uh, until now, and even now we see oh, Gonzalez trying to frame up that omoplot. Yeah, him training with Matt Serra, you know he's going to be super technical on the ground Watch with jiu-jitsu, but also be very, very aware of strikes. Watch that Frank Mir toe hold, too. A plastic hardwell over the head. Griffin's doing a good job head. defending here. There's also a potential. Oh, 
Yeah, is, is Tyson Griffin going for a bit of a there? A there is a though? there is a toehold there, but it, it can also just Back alleviate um and, and shoulders, help Tyson, get him out him of this position. Shoulders. How does he finish nice, his nice, omoplata? Nice. I mean, good, you know a thing good, or two good. about that. Well, he stood up now, so yeah, he had to swap it. He swapped it over. Ooh. Poster, you slap now. You slap. Griffin, you know, wise nice. to the submission. He also didn't give up position per se. That omoplata a lot go, of times will make the top fighter go on bottom. But right now, he's got to worry about that leg lock. Knee bar up coming here by Gonzalez. Could be. That's tight. There we go. There we go. There we go. Inside leg drop. Trying to move Gonzalez, sticking with him. Gonzalez is like glue on that leg, Kelvin. Yeah, he's trying to work ankles, trying to work on uh, knee bars. Yeah, take the back, Ooh. take the back. Now Gonzalez oh, on the back. Good. Nice Tyson, scramble. Tyson Griffin in trouble. Take him Gonzalez off, trying to hey. establish Ooh. the hooks. He's got to flatten him out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Get that other yeah. hook and flatten him out. Watch your neck, bro. Watch the neck. Stay in there, Tyson. There is, James. He Get might have something here. Watch it. Stay on the back, stay on the back. Hula, hula. The corner of Tyson Griffin calling out for the there hula hoop. Yeah, he, wanted, he wanted him to swing Focus him around Tyson. in the guard Focus, like a hula hoop. Uh, Something Gilbert going. Melendez has Scramble done plenty of times in mixed martial arts. Trap that arm. Gonzalez looking well prepared here for the UFC veteran and Tyson Griffin. There we go, there we go, there we go. Up, up. Yeah, Gonzalez pressing the pace, right, pressing the off, action here tonight against back. Tyson. I'm making Fight Tyson work, defend. Pull up, pull up. You know, it's, it's, there we oh. go. And now he's got, he's got a back on a choke, possibly. Yep. But again, the composure by Tyson Griffin on display here, staying calm, not getting frantic, and staying out of trouble for the most part. Listening well to Denny in his corner, that hula hoop escape was right there. Go, go. Gonzalez got a little bit aggressive now on bottom. Set up that homo. The corner for Gonzalez, I think, yeah, uh, you tell him to look out for that omoplata again. Feet on the hips oh, here. Keeps going on. Tyson, step over the knee. All right. Shoulder pressure. Shoulder pressure, bro. All right. Gotta beat that knee. Breathing yeah. here. Breathing Strong light work. Breathing. top uh, half guard game was Right Definitely something inside. I thought would be go. in Tyson's favor. There you go, nice, Ooh. nice, nice. Come on up. All right, now again on that omoplata. Yep. He's doing a good job grabbing the hip right there. Stack him. Maintaining the control of the omoplata. If he shucks him to the right side to try to flatten his, his face Tyson. down his to try to get the finish, or he might go or, oh, oh, go for the leg. But he, Gonzalez doing a good job, Ben, of, of chaining everything together. Yeah, he's Keep doing a great right job of that. And defending his face at the same time. I, I haven't seen him take there too much go. damage. That takes a lot of energy. But those tree trunk oh, legs, man. <laughs> nice. Good. Stay there, bro. Stay there inside. If you can touch his face, there's no need to Five minutes. Beautiful sweep. There we go. Let's Tyson's brother Kyle Griffin was Circle in the, here. the finals Circle of the, leg. Of the absolute here. tournament the at EBI. We saw him pretty much sacrifice his arm to be a finalist in that tournament in a deep, deep uh, arm bar, but he wrote it out in overtime. And you can't uh, question the durability of either brother's Griffin. Towards the leg. Circle towards the yeah, leg. Griffin's been in some fight of the night, Circle amazing feet. fights in the UFC. His one with Frank Yeager is... Oh, man. There we go. Watch that one on Fight Pass at some point if you can. But right now, we got uh, Gonzalez in this uh, inverted triangle here, working it on Tyson Griffin. Make a fist. Make a fist with your left hand. I mean, credit to Jason Gonzalez. He is really in control here and really making Tyson Griffin react in a lot of ways. Now throwing some strikes. Gonzalez has done primarily all of his offense, Kelvin, with submissions and grappling techniques. He hasn't really had to throw a, a ton of strikes. We saw it early, but he, he's chaining his jiu-jitsu. No, he's been doing a great job pressing the action, putting on the offense, and making, uh, making this a really uncomfortable match for, for Tyson Griffin. He's, he, he's young and, and ready to go tonight. Keep working, yeah, Gonzalez Tyson. tying Griffin up in knots here. Yeah, Tyson doing a good job with that S grip on Use the inside, face, trying Tyson, to get his arm up. back Tyson through to get out of this inverted triangle. He's also working a toe hold as nice. Gonzalez. Yeah. Maybe just to make him think. 
maybe just to make them react. Bring your knee, bring your knee. Come on top, ready to strike, ready to strike. Started with those tree trunk legs of Tyson Griffin. They're also sweaty here, so maybe you can Put use that to down. get free. We've got three minutes. Stay on top here, big Nicely strike. Nicely done by Tyson Griffin for as much as we compliment the nice. offense here. Of Gonzalez, got to credit the defense here, Good. Griffin. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Another one, another one. There we go. You know, I mean, uh, Gonzalez keeps throwing up his legs, keeps threatening with submissions, and, and, and Tyson, take your Tyson has here, a response for no all of rush, bro. Three minutes. Three minutes here, Ty. Chill. Slowly, keep your weight on him. Now James Gonzalez controlled here by Tyson, really, for the first time in a while, but immediately moving, trying to get back to guard is James Gonzalez. Yeah, this is where I, I would think Tyson wants to be, is on top. That's where he does most of his damage. Good. Stay on top, come to his back, come to his back. Scramble position again, now James. Oh, oh stepping oh. over, beautifully done. Wow. Working the leg. Clear your toe, clear your, your toe, wrist, clear your toe. Wrist. Griffin staying calm, very okay, deep okay. on that leg. Get the inside it's James leg Gonzalez. Triangle. Free your knee, free your knee. What a night it has been. Combat Jiu Jitsu Worlds. 24 years Two after the work, inaugural Tyson. UFC work, event. Tyson. The next step in the evolution of the ground taking place tonight. There we go. Nice little slap on your wrist. Across on your the wrist. face by Gonzalez. Nice, sticking the other leg in there. Swaps it over. Switch your legs, get he an inside just leg turn. Back to the leg game here. Tyson trying to get in deep. Nice. Yeah, Gonzalez almost countered. Up on top. Trying to get free. Up on top, come on, knee free on go. top. Here we go. 90 seconds remain here in regulation. Let's TJ DeSantis, Kelvin Gastelum, Ben Saunders, Florentine Gardens. Free your knee, bro. Free El Monte, California. Oh. oh. Cover guard, cover. Now Gonzalez One minute. in top position. 115 to work, Half guard. Tyson, 115 to work, bro. You see Griffin trying to get Rock in here, on the underhook here, but now Gonzalez grabbing the head. Yep. Hey, grab Still the locked up here is Tyson Griffin. He's got a hold of that yep. Yep. Bring leg of the Gonzalez able to get top position. Forward and pass, forward, pass. Shoulder in the chest, 45 seconds. Yeah, if he can use this sweep to at least get to a half guard position, but. 40 seconds left, maybe he can rain down some strikes or trying to frame go up for the Kamora. Yeah. There we go, there we go. Take it, take it, take it, take it. Take it. Maybe arm bar upcoming. There we go, there we go. Oh, 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 it's, oh. it's deep. Tyson Griffin trying to get free. Pull, pull, pull. It's right that there. That was a crazy right transition. Yeah. Keep your hands locked. Gonzalez still 20, trying to stick with it. 20 Tyson. seconds left to try to finish oh, so his arm bar. Look at that, Tyson yeah. Griffin. On the brink of defeat, gets free. Now these guys are going to war. <laughs> Yep. 10 seconds in regulation. In wow. Breathe in. Breathe in. He's tired, James. 10 seconds here. Overtime's right. coming. We're Breathe in. Overtime. Ooh. Hey. 10 minutes in the books. James Gonzalez looks no worse for the wear. Tyson Griffin might be a bit a tired and exhausted, but wow. And this is where judges don't matter. No. Yeah, that, that was a clear runaway in regulation for James Gonzalez, but. Tyson Griffin far from out of this one. It is all about the finish. Again, only one overtime permitted through our quarterfinals. Gonzalez able to go on offense first. He elects to take the back of the UFC veteran. Huge opportunity here for Gonzalez. Body triangle employed by Gonzalez. Gonzalez has his no, no, leg in between no, 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 Griffin's no, 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 legs. Is that he doesn't want that there, right, Kelvin? He doesn't. He, uh, he wants to have that body lock triangle, but he looks perfectly comfortable there as well. So clear hips, feet underneath. Nice. Now he switched nice. to the other Good side. Let Let's move to your right. Put the triangle on the side. Griffin trying to come to my side, Ty. Come to us. Really survive. You're trying to peel the leg away. Yeah. Yep. Griffin really grimacing from the body triangle. I wonder if he might be hurt to the body. Or if that's just the pressure that Gonzalez is putting on him. Yeah, it's a very uncomfortable position. Yeah, having the that body hey, triangle and having here, the other guy stick his hips behind you constricts your breathing, up, 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 and it's up, very up, uncomfortable. Up, up, up. There we go. He loses the position now. Tyson Griffin knows he needs to ride out dominant position longer or get a submission. 
We'll see what he elects to do. I think it, it should be mentioned. Tyson appears to be pretty tired. He's a been little fighting. bit more fatigued. Yeah. Yes. He's going to go spider web position here. He feels confident. I wonder if he feels that there's more submissions available to him here or if he feels more in control. Let's see. Let's see what he has here. Yeah, we'll see if he elects no to rush, use no any rush. strikes or just Tyson. control. On, James. Nice, James. James Gonzalez now oh. out. He's free. James Gonzalez. Victorious over Tyson Griffin. Huge, fastest, huge. Escape time yeah. and overtime. It's a beautiful win for huge him. Huge win. Huge win over a guy like Tyson Griffin. That's a big win that in your resume. Statement. That is a statement to all the other lightweights in this tournament to make it official. Here's Bruce Buffer. That's a small joke. And the winner by quickest escape in overtime, James Speedy. Gonzalez. Gonzalez speedy with his escape time and really fast and furious with his submission offense throughout regulation. This was a standout <laughs> performance, a career performance, I think, Kelvin. Lock us through some Absolutely. This is a huge win for him. He was able to get out of the submission, get out of the bad position he was in and win and win this. This match against Tyson Griffin. On his way to the semifinals with that escape, quickest escape time and overtime, only fitting that Speedy Gonzalez gets it done. All right, let's take a look at our bracket as it shapes up for the lightweights. Our final four, Wagner Hosha, Jason Hayden, Nathan Orchard, and James Gonzalez. What a night it is here in Florentine Gardens. Combat Jiu Jitsu Worlds will crown a lightweight champion, but a bantamweight champion as well. More action straight ahead. You're watching CJJ World. I'd like to thank proud sponsors of our Combat Jiu Jitsu Worlds. Nuaza Apparel. Barnana, the super banana snack. Datsusara, hemp gear for victory. Cnex wear. Elixicure, all natural hemp infused pain relief. 10th Planet Jiu Jitsu, no gi, all day. Over 90 locations worldwide. Visit them at 10thplanetjj.com. And our main sponsor, West Coast Cure. First match in the semifinals. First to the mat, representing Tiger Showman's MMA, Nick Pretty Boy Pace. And his opponent, representing Henzo Gracie Academy, Sidemar Sidco Honorio. All right, we are back to the Bantamweight division. Nick Pace taking on Sidemar Hamorio. Referee Mike Beltran will oversee our semi-final action. All right, gentlemen, first round. Let's fight. Let's fight. Let's go. Let's go, Nick. Sanis, Kelvin Gasolin, Ben Killaby Saunders. Hand fight. It is Nick Pace, who upset Nick Honstein in the quarterfinals in the red. Heavy Amorio, on who was vicious with his strikes, Kelvin, in the quarterfinal head. rounds in the black. I remember him very well. There you go. Bloodied up J.M. Holland. I'll try to do the same here against Nick Pace. Pace said that he wants to be considered a bona fide contender here in combat jiu-jitsu. He's come on a mission and you know, getting past uh, Nick Honstein in the, in the quarterfinals, yes. that makes a huge statement taking out the EBI CJJ champion. Huge, huge statement, huge confidence booster for, for, for Pace as well. Yeah, if he paid attention to uh, his last fight, though, he's going to be aware of just pulling guard, getting blasted from the top. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll see if he wants to play that game, I mean, so far, these guys feeling each other out one minute in here to regulation. Again, we have that get down rule. If you don't know what that is, if the match stays for the on the feet for more than two minutes, 
a horn will sound, the referee will intervene with a coin toss, and uh, we'll start these guys on the floor. It's all, it's all about action here at Combat Jiu Jitsu Worlds, and of course the action intensifies when strikes are introduced on the feet, or on the, on the floor rather. Awesome to see Hori and Gracie here in the stands as well. I saw that, yes. I saw that. Hori and Gracie, one of the founders of the UFC. Again, 24 years after Next UFC won here tonight, we see a new sport yeah. really take center stage. I can't stress it enough. I mean, combat jiu-jitsu was the focus of Eddie Bravo, and he wasn't able to get it going as well as he was EBI. And, you know, it's been a, an attraction, a sideshow, essentially, at the EBI tournaments. And tonight, it is the whole show. And right now, Sidemar Hamorio in on a leg of Nick Pace. Now strikes are legal. Yeah, I know. I mean, Eddie has been very vocal about yes. how he wanted combat jiu-jitsu world. And, That's you it, know, Nick. and from there was EBI, but for his first main mission was to make combat jiu-jitsu. Well, I mean, you look at modern-day Brazilian jiu-jitsu and mixed martial arts, the craftsmanship, I think, of grappling, it, it gets overlooked a little bit, Ben. We see guys that you know, really aren't comfortable to play off their back for prolonged periods of time because in an MMA fight, if you're on your back, a lot of times you're losing on the judges' scorecards. Here, you're not penalized for playing that, that guard game. No, it's definitely, it's definitely beautiful. And, you know, the fact that they were able to get this regulated and, and get this started is a testament to what Eddie's kind of bringing to the community, jiu-jitsu, martial arts in general, man. This is, this is huge. There you go. No, I mean, he is, Eddie is changing the way yeah. we, we do jiu-jitsu, you know? Yeah. Relax, brother, relax. You're good. You need all that. Snap his head. Left hand on his head. Knee kick. All right, guys running out of real estate. We'll get them reset here in the uh, middle of the map. Come on, Nick, hand fight. You know, this, this match, a lot different for both of these guys. Nick Pace was, uh, you know, on the bottom of Nick Hansen in his first match, and Hamoria was on top uh, of J.M. Holland running down the strikes. I mean, these guys are not really willing to relinquish position on their feet. Right. None of them had really initiated any sort of uh, takedown, really. And I think that shows you from one match to another in this tournament, your strategy and game plan really needs to be melded and, and conform to your next opponent. It's not the same strategy throughout. No, and, and, and just like MMA fights, I mean, styles play into it as well. I mean, these guys have different styles than the guys they fought before, so it just creates a different you know, you know dynamic here in, this, this in this match. Nick Pace now on top here. Stand over him. Now let's come down on him. Now in on a leg is Yay! the answer of product. Now they're pressing the pace a little bit more. Morio unable to land Ain't the no shot, he right heavy strikes nose. down with his back on the map. We'll see if he tries to get top position, maybe in a scramble. But right now controlling Nick Pace. Playing a 50-50 game right oh. here. Oh, there it is. Gets on top. No see real him. advantage when it comes to the leg game here between either man. I want to see him rain down some of those slaps oh. we saw him in his last match. Pace in deep on a leg. Past the halfway point here. Take top. If you're not going to get it, take top. It's a smart corner. move. Right his corner saying you're not going to get it. Stay on top. Unable to do so now. Amorio in on a leg of Pace. Oh. Runs it. Ooh, rolling his pace. There it is! Oh, Cyborg Hamorio on his way to the finals! Wow. A stoppage in regulation for the Henzo Gracie Philly Black Belt. Nick Pace upset with himself. Justifiably so. He wanted this badly. But right now, Sidemar Hamorio punches his tickets to the first ever. CJJ World Finals to make it official and get the time of the stoppage. Here's Bruce Buff.
And the winner at five minutes, 26 seconds, my heel hook, Sidebar Psycho Honorio. Sidebar Memoria getting it done. Stoppage in regulation. He was victorious over J.M. Holland via stoppage in overtime. But on his way to the finals, he's got $5,000 banked. And he gets it with a beautiful submission here. Stopping pace. Walk us through this, uh, this action here, Kelvin. Yeah, he just leaped right into that ankle lock. He got it. Yeah, they said heel hook. It actually looked like it, it could have been a combination of knee bar and heel hook right yeah, there. Yeah, it kind of did look, right? Another shot of it here. You can see Leaped on the feed, he already it. knew that he had a good shot at getting it. He commits to it, wraps it up. Yep, gets it right behind the arm. Oh. Pace Rolls. tried to spin out of it, unable to do so. Sidemar right Hamorio on his way to the finals here at Combat Jiu-Jitsu Worlds. Presenting Mid-City MMA, first to the mat is Sheridan Moran. Let's go. And his opponent, representing California Mixed Martial Arts, Chad Savage George. Our second semifinal set to get underway in the Bantamweight bracket. Both of these guys were featured in the first ever EBI CJJ Bantamweight tournament. Chad George was a finalist. Sheridan Moran came up short to Nick Honstein. And now these guys are gonna go to war with a spot in the finals on the line. TJ DeSantis, Kelvin Gastelum, Ben Killaby Saunders, Matt Side, Florentine Gardens. Chad George victorious his first time out via stoppage. Got a win via Darce over Nathan Trapping near. Sheridan Moran victorious over Barry Yoshida, escape time and overtime solved that one. Yeah, Chad George coming in a little bit more fresh. You know, he had a relatively quick uh, match, Both his time. last match. And Moran had, a, had to go deep into the can. overtime with Yoshida, so Good. might be a little bit fatigued. Yeah, he took a lot of uh, open palms to the year, too. That's right. Going back to Chad George's one and only CJJ tournament appearance, he had that rib injury, and he said, you know, I'm, I'm healthy here tonight. Uh, he, he's looked every bit he looks, that part. He looks the part, absolutely. He looks healthy, he looks fresh, he looks in shape, ready to win this tournament. For those that have never had a rib injury, it's super debilitating. You can't no. do anything without uh, pain. Like, like defended twister. Oh. Like to breathe. Yeah, How about like that? breathe. <laughs> right. Oxygen. Right now he's on top position here really of nice. Sheridan Moran. Nice. You got it. Nice. Settle, settle, settle. George he in might have on the neck. You already got the head control. Find the rest of the control. He doesn't have control of the legs near Josh Barnett. And George is going to tell him to find the rest of the control. This is not Miles, buddy. Now he goes to the figure four grip. Oh, the savage Chad George in a good position here. What does he need to do to finish this, Ben? I mean, essentially, if he, oh, if he, if he, if he can get the leg, that, that'll help him, but he absolutely doesn't need it. What he's doing right here is a beautiful way to try to, try to squeeze it in. But he's also got to pay attention to his squeezing endurance because the round just started. Two minutes into regulation here. Chad George oh. trying to stay on this choke. Moran trying to answer some strikes, but George able to use that opportunity to readjust. Choke hitting tighter. Moran moving, though. Credit to him, yeah, Kelvin, good. for sticking through this. Jeez, this is for you. Oh, he extremely tight, but he's doing a good job. gets free. That'll get below the knees. Nicely done by Sheridan Moran. But again, George nice, trying nice, to get nice. right back Go in back on it. it. Good. Smart move by Moran to stand up and get out of it. You know, this is where the, the, the game, the wrestling game of Chad George pays dividends for him. He's a top positional grappler, and combat jiu-jitsu serves his entire game very well. Yeah, I mean, his style plays really well into these, these rules, this kind of uh, tournament, you know, the combat jiu-jitsu rules. 
because of his wrestling uh, pedigree. Run a lot of space there. And his MMA experience. Oh, no doubt about doubt. it. Nice. You know, Chad George has had a, a tale of two different sort of submissions, not necessarily define his career, but be very notable. In the WEC, he was not very happy when he was 10 finger guillotined by um, Scott Jorgensen. And then he answered that up later in his career, getting a, a beautiful Von Flu choke in Bellator. And now it's all about the submissions here in combat jujitsu. And Chad George back, Chad. really having a renaissance, I think, in his career. I think this type of game for an MMA veteran like Chad George is really going to pay him well and serve him well and, and really launch a second career in his combat uh, journey, really. Yeah, no, I mean, he looks revitalized here tonight. You know, like he really wants it, like he really trained for this, like this is something really important yeah, he, for him. He won the first one in beautiful fashion, and right now, man, he, he almost closed this one yeah, out pretty minutes, quick. Chad. He's got to build some confidence, though, for Sheridan Moran to battle through yeah. that choke, a choke that George finished his first fight with. So Moran knows oh, that he can survive that position. Nice strikes there. Used by Chad George. Why not? I mean, we're standing Matt's side here. That is a testament to the action that we've seen in both of these tournaments. Bantamweight's taking center stage now. The lightweights were getting work done very quickly. Combat Jiu-Jitsu announcing itself to the world here tonight. Sheridan Moran now. Again, in top position, but he has his head controlled here by Chad George. Yeah, no, this this gets me excited. I mean, there's a room full of UFC and WEC veterans, nice. and I mean, there it just go, gets me on, fired up on. for my fight. Michael Bisping coming up a couple of weeks for Kelvin Gastelum. Been a Why crazy week for you, sir. Yeah, <laughs> I felt sick to my stomach when I heard the news, but one one door opened, another one door closed, another one right. opened. Absolutely. Moran now with his head free, setting up inside. Again, you can see, you know, Chad doing a good job controlling, hustling, controlling his uh, his arm and his head, so he gets hey, his posture and strike. Up, up. Corner Moran calling for that posture. Looked like Play George is going to try to frame up a triangle, you unable to do so. There you go. I love the hand placement of hand up. Chad. Nice, Chad. Good, good, good. Know the knee position is. And Scramble leads these guys back to their feet. Let's put him on his back, Chad. This match a lot uh, more difficult, a lot more work being put out here by Chad George than in his first matchup. Yeah, Chad George's corner telling, telling him he wants, they mm -hmm. want him to put his opponent on his back. George definitely capable of that. We talked about his wrestling game. Chad, look for his snap downs. Yes. Beautiful, settle, pass and pass and pass. Yes, look at yes, the confidence yes. here, Chad George. He goes in on that takedown. Gave up his neck, but looks, looks to be out of the nice danger. Jumped to the right side. Oh, oh now he's oh, trying to come out here for Chad George. Beautiful, keep the headlock. Oh, keep the headlock. God. Looks Good. like he lost you keep position that, for buddy. a brief Work moment. He still has the arm isolated, but Sheridan Moran in a lot less trouble keep than that, he was in a moment ago. Trap. Yeah, he caught a leg. Now he can't jump over to the other side to potentially finish All it. Right. Let's get some good control. Butterfly right implemented right here Good. by Moran. Nice. Double right. butterfly. Nice stretch. Watch the base. Don't let him break. Nice now recovery. Guard. Good. Now let's clear up. Right. Oh. That's what happens when you chill there. There's controls. We got three minutes, Chad. Good. Yeah. Again? Yes, Why not? Yes, <laughs> now, Chad George waving the crowd on to get on the side. You know, history will show that Chad George is the first good. combat jiu-jitsu player good. at EBI to ever successfully good. land a strike. Good. And he really changed the entire environment, the feel of the room when he landed the He's first strike against J.M. Holland. And yeah, he, he, he loves this. Good. He really feels alive out there competing in combat jiu-jitsu. And you see that gamesmanship oh, a little yeah. bit. Oh, yeah, that first slap nice. lit up the whole row. I mean, it, it was amazing to watch. Credit to Why all of our easy. competitors Why? here tonight keeping that vibe going. I mean, this really does feel good. completely different minutes, than your average jiu-jitsu tournament. Yeah, I mean, this platform, this, this, this setup they have here, 
is amazing. I've, I, I've never been to a jiu-jitsu competition good, 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 of good, this good, caliber. Good. It's amazing. Two eight-man tournaments taking place here tonight. TJ DeSantis, Ben Saunders, Kelvin Gastelum, Florentine Gardens, El Monte, California, making history tonight. The first ever CJJ Worlds. These guys good. putting in work. The winner will take on Sidemar Homorio in the finals of our lightweight tournament or our bantamweight tournament. He's not doing too much from his back uh, as far as offense, but he's definitely controlling his posture and he's definitely not getting big, beat big up from there. Landing a select few strikes to the head and the ears. Good. pressure. You gotta wonder if Moran knows that the offensive attack from George maybe a, a little too difficult to solve here tonight. Maybe he's trying to play for overtime where he'll be put in a, a dominant position or maybe he's just trying to make George make a mistake before he explodes into something. Yeah, try to wear him down a little bit, bring him a little bit more on his level as far as... Oh. Oh. Beautiful left hand by the savage Chad George. Oh. A little bit of palm. Yeah, oh, those are some palm strikes. Chad George oh. living up to the nickname the Savage. Moran able to get some space, moves back to his feet. Take him down. Come on. That's what happens when you get slapped. You want to get the heck out of there. Yeah. <laughs> you know, when you look at Chad George throw from the open guard there, he's really hipping into it too. That's that's that MMA experience, I think, with the ground and pound. Oh yeah. It was Reminded me of the old Mark Coleman ground and pound. Yes. 30 seconds, Chad. Less than 30 seconds remains here in regulation. Flex forward. Ooh, Chad George. Trying to make something happen here in the last few seconds. Getting innovative. You gotta love it, going for it. Resting on his laurels. Shared to Moran doing the same thing. 10 seconds of regulation remains. Overtime will decide this one. Fantastic regulation. How will this one end? We will find out. So now we are headed to overtime. This is our semi-final round, so three maximum overtimes will be permitted. The overtime ride length maximum three minutes. Now that they're in the semifinals, are they doing one overtime or three? Three, three minute yeah, overtime yeah, max. So both of these guys obviously would love to finish it before we get to that third overtime or even second overtime. I mean, they got another matchup. The winner of this is going to meet Memorial in the finals. Chad George on offense first. He elects to take the back. Sheridan Moran. Good. George trying to get that body triangle. Moran trying to stop it. Nice, solid control. Try to get Former UFC right heavyweight on. champion Easy Josh shoulder. Barnett in the Lock corner in of Chad George. Barnett, you know, standout mixed martial artist, but also a standout in the grappling game. He uh, yeah. competed throughout his entire career. He's very experienced. Amazing catch wrestler, yes. Forgive me if I'm wrong, but did he not submit Frank Mir? Work that bottom hand to his shoulder, Chad. Dean Let's Lister and Meta Morris, he did submit with a, uh, almost like a can opener from the guard. That's right. I think he might still be the heavyweight champ there. Yeah. Well, to Moran able to get free. He does so relatively quickly. But again, we are in three overtimes right, here now as we're in our semifinals, so. George, while he didn't necessarily control for that long, he has more of an opportunity to do so. Sheridan Moran now on the back of Chad George. He already lost one hook though. That's that's big for Chad George. See if he can try to clear. Other side. Other side, Chad. Bottom of our first overtime here. Sheridan Moran in control. There you go, Chad. Come on, let's get out of there. Get He's trying go. to get that arm up and over the left side of his head so he can spin out. Let's go, Chad. 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 Let's go, Chad, come on. Hey, take control of that arm. Take control of that arm. 
Get that two on one. Get that hand off your head. Sheridan Moran now really racking up that time here in control of Chad George. Establishes both hooks once again. Let's go. Corner here of George Allen. He's got to move. Headed to our second overtime. Top of the second right, overtime now for Chad George. He elects to take the back. We'll see if he tries to reestablish that ride time equalization here or if he's going to be as aggressive as he was the first time. Immediately going to that body triangle is the Savage. Don't forget, strikes are still permitted here in overtime. Chad George hasn't forgot. Here he is. Moran trying to peel the hand away. Face lock. Yes, 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 now yes, trying yes, to get underneath yes, the chin. Oh, he's Chad got George it. might be in business here. Body trying to lock in rear naked oh, choke in. He's Sheridan got Moran it. trying to peel it. Oh, he's he's got it. The savage Chad George gets a stoppage at the top of the second overtime. Sheridan Moran has some quick work if he wants to continue in this tournament. Never say never. We've already seen some crazy upsets here. He chooses the back. Okay. Interesting choice. This is where the tactics and strategy is going to grow, not only for these fighters, but the fighters watching at home. As we evolve and move through combat jiu-jitsu, we'll see if the data collected here plays a factor at all going forward. But right now, Sheridan Moran, his future in this tournament may be very short. Trying to open up Chad George with some strikes as Moran. Deja vu for the Savage. Once again, bound for the Bantamweight Combat Jiu-Jitsu Finals. Look at the relief on Chad George. I mean, yeah. you could tell he was ready. He had to work for it. The Savage Chad George will meet Sidemar Hamorio in the Bantamweight Finals to make this one official. He's fired up. Here's Bruce Buffer. And we have a winner in overtime with a rear naked choke. They call him Chad Savage George. Fired up for good reason is the WEC veteran Chad the Savage George on his way to the finals of the first ever combat jiu-jitsu worlds. He will not meet Nick Honstein this time. Sidemore Hamorio will be the man he meets for CJJ Gold. Walk us through the Savage, Kelvin. Beautifully done. I mean, he stayed patient on it. The guy was trying to hold off as much as he can, but Chad George is a savage. <laughs> Living up to the nickname Sheridan Moran, he tried to respond. He was unable to do so, didn't have a lot of time to work. It's the savage on his way to meet Sidemar Hamoria. Let's take a look at the bracket and how it shapes up. Hamoria was able to dispatch J.M. Holland. Then it was Nick Pace. Up next, Chad George, who got past Nathan Trappinger. And of course, Sheridan Moran right there. The finals are set. Lightweights will vie for CJJ Gold later here tonight. This is Combat Jiu-Jitsu World. remain in tonight's Combat Jiu-Jitsu World's Lightweight Tournament. For the first match in the semifinals, we have first to the mat, representing Wagner Rocha Martial Arts, Wagner Rocha! And his opponent, representing Gracie, Fishhawk BJJ, Jason Hayden! Hayden victorious, so a bit of an upset uh, heel hook submission for himself. Wagner Hosha continues right, on in the tournament. Good fight. Good fight. Head up, let's go. Go, All right, here we go. We are underway. Hosha. Alert. 
the uh, black with gray. Elbow tight. Hayden with that huge victory over Domingos with the heel hook. You know, this would be another upset for him, and, and that's really what happens here in these tournaments. Sometimes, uh, you know, a guy that is not necessarily the favorite, a dark horse, if you will, makes a name for himself, and I think already Jason Hayden has really made a statement with that previous win. If he can pull off another win over yeah. Wagner Hosha, I mean, we're talking about a career night. Absolutely. I mean, he had a great outing in his last match against Rafael Domingos. You know, I mean, this guy could be the next Gordon Ryan. I don't know. I mean, you never two, know. Three, two, three years ago, who, who knew about Gordon Ryan, you know? Yeah. Wagner Hosha was able to get work done against Mikey Zindler. We're going to make a choke stoppage for Hosha. Yep. Okay. Heavy, heavy, heavy. Address it. There. Hey, forward, forward, forward. Press. Now Hosha you press. Trying Watch to it. Yeah. Not let him free. Trying to Smart maintain about his how position. You engage forward. Yeah, yeah. Remember, his leg. press intelligently. Yep. Underneath. Good. Underneath, we're good. Yep. There we go. Good work. Back at it. Yeah, Jason Hayden, the uh, the younger brother of Josh Hayden, who's uh, who's also competed at EBI. Man, they they are ridiculous at leg locks. When he got that heel hook in the last one, it made you cringe. Yeah, when I saw him turn that, <laughs> it was nasty. Yeah, that's what's cool. You talk about the the brothers. I mean, jujitsu is really a, a family martial art. It's very rare that you know one one set of siblings, yeah. one you know singular sibling will will train where the other one won't. And uh, we've seen that a few times. I mean, we saw Tyson Griffin earlier. His brother Kyle Griffin has competed in EBI before. You know, Brazilian jiu-jitsu, it's it's contagious. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it just yes, yes. gives you so many values, family values as well. Elevate, there, there we go, pressure. Learned so many the, lessons the through, through jiu-jitsu, you know. Rift and control. if you're getting beat up by a family member, you might want to learn how to defend <laughs> yourself. <laughs> Wagner Hoshin now, top position here. Go back on the Very. Let's get active, let's get active. This is another big match for, for Hayden. Hayden. I mean, he's got Wagner Hoshin right here in front of him, on top of him. Wagner Hoshin is slapping control. the thighs, skin to skin. No that, that hurts. That hurts. He's oh, going to yeah. make it as yeah, painful as possible. Get active here. I mean, everything that Wagner Hoshi yeah. does to his opponents is painful. <laughs> yeah. He is not a nice, nice no, CJJ competitor. was perfect for him. <laughs> You're talking about his EBI performances on the feet. Oh, he's press. reaching out for the heads. They're almost like ball strikes. Just trying to get position and, and you know, gauge that range here. It's all good Bury on the, the floor. Legs. Control those arms. Wrist control. Now back to the feet. Trying to get on that collar tie is Hayden. There it is, yeah, let's go. Yeah. Oh, wrist lock almost on the feet. It looked like it. Definitely got a reaction for sure. Almost playing the Wagner Rocha game Big to Wagner Rocha. Rocha. Right now in on the leg. Nice. Rocha. Single leg. Now press. Here comes the slab. Control the legs, press. Into that inner thigh. You. Ooh, there nice it is. Little. Good, Barry, Barry. Pull to the side, coming down Drag. with the strike was Hosha. Keep that pressure. Wrist control. Remember the control. Shots control the body the by the Brazilian. Hayden able to get free. Now in on a shot, running out of real estate. Go back to uh, face. Oh, Nothing like down. Beltran's there. I mean, this man is a wall. Intelligently, <laughs> <laughs> you'll find yeah, your opening. You Beltran create some piece. stuff like that. You throw day, heavyweights at this man, like and he would just stop him. So. <laughs> Show him with his beard. T.J. DeSantis, Kelvin Gastelum, Ben Saunders. Our first semifinal here back. in the lightweight Address bracket. The leg. Address the legs. Address the legs. Press forward. Quarantine Gardens, El Monte, California. Yeah, Appreciate yeah, you joining yeah, us tonight. Yeah, History being made in combat. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. I think wealth's being made on the side of Hayden's yeah. face by the right Control hand. Control that wrist and feed. It is, yeah. You got to disengage here, Jay. Let's go. Control that wrist yeah, and feed. Yeah, Wagner is definitely making in. use of the palm strikes in this one. And having fun doing yeah, it. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Yep. Keep going, Jay. Elbow tight, elbow tight. Nice. Legs, Good pressure. He might have pissed oh, him off him when turn. he went for that. Uh, Keep him flat. Jay, go on the leg. The wrist, uh, Keep wrist lock. Flat, get your position, elbow and then we tight, make him Jay. pay. Elbow tight here. Stay there. <laughs> Hosha, I think, there. moved the rash guard to land skin to skin almost. <laughs> yes, there it is. Yes. Wow. I, I mean, there's no rule against it. Here we go, Wagner. 
Breeze, let's get active. Let's get active. Let's get active. Let's move, move, move. Let's get over there. 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 Of Hayden out, he might be in out. business here. Head out, head Stacking out. You his got Hayden. that arm, you got that arm. Out. Hey, get the head out. There's, yep, good. Dustin. Nicely done thus far yep. by Hayden. Oh. Beautiful. When he's there, we gotta keep him there. Now, I wonder if that gets in the head of Hayden. Hey, Clearly, your world is rash guard moving up and then the <laughs> thwack of the, the palm strike. I mean, creative, very creative. I mean, not only does it cause more physical pain, but just mental anguish. Maybe, yeah. you know, just get inside the head a little bit. Yeah, it, it makes somebody really uncomfortable. There's More on the clock. Clear strategy and game plan. He, he clearly knew what he was doing by pulling <laughs> that up and smacking it. No tea. I think Three. Wagner Hosha has go. pleasant Three. dreams about hurting his opponents when he sleeps <laughs> yeah. at night. I'm going to bring torture into combat GG2. Push right. Push right. Push Mind your setup. Secure that takedown again. All right, now back the same to the collar tie here. We'll see if Hayden can get in business. I mean, in these positions, Hosha generally controls. And if he's not controlling, we talk about him just doing the little things, you know, the, the aggressive hand grab, the questionable if it's a palm strike or not, or if he's just gauging distance or trying to grab a collar tie. He, he just makes you so uncomfortable. And for many people, I think in, in some of these tournaments, it has gotten in their head and made them more aggressive. And, Wagner smiling there. I mean, he, he's a guy who really likes to make forward, you make forward. a mistake there and then capitalize. Is. Now we press intelligently. Address the legs, bury him again. You bury him again. Let's go. I mean, I said it once, but I'll say it again. I mean, Hori and Gracie is in the stands. 24 years ago in Denver, Colorado, he, he was there watching those fights. And now, yeah. 24 years later, he's here tonight watching the very first CJJ. It's pretty cool. I mean, Hori and Gracie, this is all really an extension of the UFC, because without the UFC in this country, does Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu explode the in the manner that it does? Right. Does mixed martial arts come to fruition? Go, two Probably two and not. Yes. And to, to ignore the fact that UFC 1 was 24 years that's ago, it. to ignore that's the fact, that's to ignore the strikes yes. here. Oh, yes. Excuse yes. me. We don't lose this. We don't lose this. Let's stand up. Secure. The Secure. Hosha in business here. That's it. On Jason Hayden, That's now it. on the back. You got two but to as work. I was saying, I mean, without the UFC, perfect. there is no EBI. There is no combat jujitsu. Lock him in place. What happened here is truly really cool. Play. I agree 100%. That's it. Exactly. Now you can reign. Now on the body triangle Ooh. is Hosha. Two minutes remain That's here in regulation. Yep. Hayden kind of downplaying the strikes, sticking out his tongue. Press, yes, it might have hurt. Exactly. But even if that's the reaction it elicits from Wagner Hosha, you got to think from his standpoint, he likes it. Hayden is not necessarily defending as well when he's sticking out his tongue and no selling the strikes. Yeah, no, I mean, Wagner's there, he has complete control. Landing down shots, he's having fun. Yeah, he's gonna grind him out here. Oh, now trying to crush the face, get under the chin. That's it. Keep that body lock. Keep following it. Ooh. You got one minute. Four. One minute. Those are making Hayden move. One minute. Let's go. We got a minute left, Jay. Oh. Wagner, your heart just mean with those strikes. Let's get that fuck your face, Wagner. Let's minute go. Minute left for regulation. Don't count Hayden out of this one, though. He's been game throughout. Lunch money, Wagner, let's push. go! Watch the trap, there's the trap. Mug him, mug him, let's go! The corner of Hosha telling him to mug him. We're out. Clear the I foot. think Hosha mugs all of his opponents. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, this is definitely what I expected from Wagner if he got that's your it, back. That's it, that's it. Got control of that arm, maybe I trying to fish. Get in control of the slot machine. Oh, he got the arm trap. He does have the arm trap. 28 seconds, seconds left for Wagner Hosha to do something with it. Right there's the triangle. Hayden holding on. Find grip on the wrist. 20, 20 seconds, seconds, as I mentioned. Now it's free. Oh. Wagner Hosha oh. trying to pull it free. There's wow. the down. Wagner Hosha on his way to the front row. In regulation, wow. he banks five more thousand dollars. Woo! That's what the striking does. It opens up submissions, just like it opened up that arm. Wagner Hosha. Ooh. Wow.
Beautiful done in regulation. Unfortunately for Hayden, he was very close to making it through regulation, but unable to do so. Wagner Hosha moving on to the lightweight finals to make it official. It's Bruce Buffer. And we have a winner at 9 minutes 45 seconds by Armbar, Wagner Ocha. All he does is win. Wagner Hosha getting it done. His second submission of the night in regulation. He's still in the mix for $15,000. Kelvin, walk us through this beautiful finish. Yeah, right now he's trying to stick to the back. He gets that arm trapped. And he's trying to go for, for a Kimura or Americano right there. Can't quite get it. There you go. A submission there. finish, Wagner Hosha. Once he opened up with those strikes and started landing down those slaps, it, it gave, uh, you know, it, it made Hayden react and give Wagner Hosha that arm. Which Wagner Hosha getting it done. Armbar stoppage, punching his ticket to the finals. Wagner Hosha ready to try to claim $15,000. That's going to be a great final. Our second semifinal straight ahead. This is Combat Jiu Jitsu Worlds. First up to the mat, representing 10th Planet Portland, Nathan Orchard. And his opponent, representing Sarah, Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, Jay Speedy Gonzalez. Yeah, Jay. Okay. Come on, Nate. Second semifinal in the lightweight bracket. It is James Gonzalez versus 10th Planet representative Nathan Orchard. Gonzalez, the Matt Sarah black belt. Nathan Orchard, no stranger to these formats. EBI finalist. Already got a big win here tonight in combat jujitsu. Gonzalez, he's a Matt Sarah prodigy, huh? He is, definitely. and. Uh, I'm sure Matt Sarah is watching online. I've and been able to compete against those guys. Ray Longo, Matt Sarah, those are all great guys. Great, great guys. I've had the pleasure of having him be my coach on the Ultimate Fighter. Yeah. Nice. Give me some smack. <laughs> Always be aware of your elbows. Watch that arm drag. <laughs> yeah, he definitely has to watch the arm drag against Orchard. Orchard turning his body almost 90 degrees to Gonzalez. What do, what do you think he's doing there, Kelvin? Trying to bait him. Trying to bait him. Grab an arm, grab a leg, see what happens. Gonzalez takes a seat. That makes him a grounded fighter. Susceptible to strikes. Ooh, I think he threw maybe one or two that weren't technically legal. Orchard knew it. Nice sign of respect. These guys get in the, the motion of throwing these strikes, and it's, it's almost hard to stop. Especially if you've fought MMA. You're not used to the real set saying you can't. These guys. Oh! Gonzalez might be hurt. That was from the whole thing. Yeah, I, I think he might rock him a little bit. That was this a nice is, uppercut. Yes. This, this is funny. A little yeah. bit of reversal of force. We have the get down two. rule, Third which is different than the mixed two. martial arts. We have the stand up rule. Orchard, I think, hurt Gonzalez. So what did, what did Gonzalez do? He stood up. He got Stood away up. from, you know, being able to be struck. Yeah, smart move. It, it's really mixed martial arts in reverse when it comes to the striking. Yes. And <laughs> it was on display there. Hey, your arms back. Hey, what your a arms night back. it has been. TJ DeSantis, Kelvin Gastelum, Ben Saunders. Combat Jiu-Jitsu Worlds. The next step in the evolution of the ground. You know, oh. Making history. Eight minutes. There it is. Nice. That's what oh, yeah. nice. Nice. Dave. Appreciate everyone joining us on inchbyinch.tv. It's where you can find all of these great pay-per-views. Of course, UFC.tv as well, but inchbyinch.tv, your home for Combat Jiu-Jitsu Worlds. These guys head to head right now, trying to peel away the hands is Orchard. We'll see what he 
Trying to do. Ooh. There you go. Nice. He looks like he keeps nice. going for either an arm drag to take the back or an ankle pick attempt to get the takedown. Oh, He's all was, smart, going to a knee yeah. and throwing some strikes, go. but now yeah, landing yeah, in yeah, kind yeah, is Nathan down, Orchard, down, making down, these down, strikes down, count. He got a little heated down. from those strikes yeah. Gonzalez gave him. Well, I, think, I think it was illegal again, so it I think so. I, I think you're right. He can't slap him here. No one is grounded. It's kind of an interesting uh, loophole in the rule because they're still, I mean, very much grappling when you're in that sort of koala position, but no one is grounded, therefore no strikes are legal. Keeps going to a knee to strike, but then he drags up. Keys. Not really going down on knee. I don't know. And the question is, I mean, where where is the knee? Are there three points on the ground when he lands a strike, or are there three points on the ground when he throws the strike? You see, that would be just just part of that data data, data that right. we're, we're collecting tonight. It's either the combo is what's doing it, bringing him off his feet because he's trying right. to add more than one strike, or he's putting so much emphasis on the power that it's pulling him up. I mean, we saw a straight up like boxing affair earlier in our yes. prelims as well. So, I mean, we knew that we were going to learn some things about combat jujitsu, and I think we've been educated in a lot of ways, learning more. Oh, I mean, this is just an introduction to it. I think we're going to see a whole lot of different things in the near future. Yeah, they're going to study this, come back crazy. Yeah. Smart move there by Nathan Orchard. Gonzalez was trying to bait him down there on the floor, and. Orchard didn't want to be in that position. He got away quickly. Oh, beautiful roll through. Magic underhook top side. Gonzalez trying to control that leg. Tempted out of pass. Oh, hard right hand by Gonzalez. Hard. He might have rocked him. Yeah, yeah, come up. Fred, got it. Got it. Very nice hand. Double unders if you want. Butterflies now for Orchard. You, you can kind of tell that Orchard did not like that strike. You know, we talk about the open hand strikes. You can box the ear. If it lands behind the ear, I mean, we've seen that time and time again in mixed martial arts. If you land a strike behind the ear, it can really play a factor. And now Orchard getting that rubber guard going. Now, now Gonzalez is, 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 is in uh, Orchard's world. Yeah, we'll see if he goes for the dead Orchard right now. He's kind of double bagging, keeping his posture down. And this is a position where Nathan Orchard, while he's on bottom, he Clears completely it. owns your movement. He is very much the one in control. That is not a comfortable position. A lot of time for Orchard to work here, four and a half minutes in regulation. Can't do anything there. Beautiful strikes. These guys vying for Hmm. Spot in the finals against Wagner Hosha. It would be a rematch in a lot of ways for Nathan Orchard, who ran into Hosha at the last EBI. Bring that elbow in. But this time, the there would be strikes. Right. There you go. Good. He's doing a great job with that double bag. Hey, space now. There it is, there it is. Keep going back that back. stops him from just jumping out or rolling out. Four minutes left, four minutes remaining. Now you got plenty of time. Keep going with it. Keep going with it. He's always trying to get free. Now holding on to his, his own leg. I mean, this is really ultimate control, right, Ben? Yeah, and you can and you can hear Eddie. He's telling him, be patient. You know, uh, he's got he's got a lot of options here. He can either, he, he, he can go Umba Plata, he can go 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 Plata, Go Go Clinch. Right now he's bringing that leg back up. Let's think about a pump. There's arm bars. This is Nathan Orchard's world. And as you can see, he can't get struck. That's so... That's that's the beauty of the rubber guard and really Eddie's system. I feel he has to be completely on the defense right now because that left arm is completely trapped and in danger. And again, if this was a mixed martial arts bout, some judge somewhere, despite Orchard in complete control, would score this round for Gonzalez on top if it was a long period of this because he quote unquote. He must be in control. He's in top position. If you guys can see what he's doing with his left elbow and forearm, but predominantly his elbow, he is stabbing it into his neck. And now he's grinding it into his jaw and his neck. It is a super un uncomfortable position to make him squirm and move, and then an opening nice. will eventually he arise. He can't out of that, man. He can't out of that. And how much energy is Nathan Orchard really exerting here, Ben? I mean, is this tiring it's his for him? world, no. He, he, he doesn't really have to 
really contract much of his muscles right now. Might be in trouble here. Oh, oh, oh Gonzalez able to get free. Credit to Orchard for going for it. All that rubber guard transition, man. I have little short legs. I can't do it. There it is. But it takes me back to UFC Phoenix. And the man, Ben Saunders, was smashing this. Yes, sir. Right there on the, in the, in the guard. Via, via dead orchard. That's what Nathan went, just went for. Orchard putting his hand in the face of Gonzalez. What a fun night this has been, guys. Combat Jiu-Jitsu Worlds already exceeding expectations, and we're not even to a final yet. Yeah, this is one of the greatest events I've ever attended, let alone been a part of. Let's the 90 seconds remain here in our final semifinal. Lightweights on the mat, Nathan Orchard, James Gonzalez. Ooh. Beautiful right tricky. hand. That was 100% legal by Gonzalez. Drops to a knee through a right hand. Orchard does the same thing. <laughs> These guys going tit for tat. We got one minute to work, James. One up. minute. 60 seconds remain. Short time, one minute. Ooh, nice little counter there. Parried by Orchard. I mean, we expected strikes on the floor. I didn't expect modified standing striking game, and that's what we're getting. No. And, th and think about it, that will open up takedowns. It really will. It will open, I mean, it's a, it's a different, I mean, that's a strategy I think we're going to see evolve over time here in Combat Jiu Jitsu. Oh, the next event, overhook. we're going to see the craziest overhook. things. Overhook. <laughs> 30 seconds. I could see that seconds. causing a knockout if they put all their hip yeah. weight into oh, yeah. it. Yeah, I, I can Matt. see it. Never say never. I mean, the palm is, is a, it can be as, just as hard as a punch. I mean, we mentioned it earlier, Boss Rutten destroyed people with palm strikes. Oh, yeah. Take something, top side, top side, top side, top side. Now some strikes from Orchard. You see right there, Gonzalez respects him. He had to cover up there as he went back to his feet. Let's open him up. Ooh. Oh. 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 That's a mistake by Gonzalez, but oh. time not on Nathan Orchard's side. Woo. That's a way to end man. regulation. All right, coin flip. Headed to overtime again. Our semifinals have a maximum of three overtime periods. Each top will consist of maximum of three minutes. Nathan Orchard goes on offense first, top of our first overtime. He elects the back of James Gonzalez. All right, James, fight those hands. Cross face here, trying to dig it underneath the chin is Nathan Orchard. There you go. Now switch sides. Grinning his face, must have been. Both hands on the mat. Both Ooh. On the we saw a lot of that in the last EBI. Guys going for the rear naked, settling with the face crush. Sometimes the crush would be right over the nose. Yeah. Yeah, and it just hurts yeah. like hell. It does not take much pressure to break the nose. Orchard trying to dig across the face with the blade of his forearm. Out. Nicely done there by Gonzalez. Orchard made it as much uncomfortable as he could. I mean, he spun through a body triangle. Orchard still had the potty triangle when he ended up in the full guard there, so. Credits to Gonzalez, man. He's yeah. stuck in there. Gonzalez on the back now of Orchard, top, or bottom of the first overtime. See if he can try to make Orchard as uncomfortable as Orchard made him a moment ago. I love Ooh. the strikes that Orchard's doing there, oh, man. Yeah, why not? Well, I mean, that's something in mixed martial arts. When you have your back taken and you throw strikes, not really an advisable strategy. But here in combat jujitsu, maybe it's different. Yeah. Well, he's forcing him like he's holding the body with both his arms. That how are you even going to defend that? Orchard trying to spin free. Nice adjustment by Gonzalez. Gonzalez able to maintain that body triangle, which I think allowed him to stay in the position. Now he goes to traditional hooks. Get your knee in between his legs. Which usually means that there was pressure on the ankle that Nathan was put in there. Orchard is trying to scrape the, the heel off so he can get his hips to the mat. We're up now. Orchard again. Gotta get your elbow inside, Nate. Gotta get your elbow inside. Selling out, grabbing that leg, just trying to 
If he Open gets the that door. killed down, he's going to yes. pop over. Yeah. Yeah. Gonzalez able to bring in that leg into play now, isolating the yeah. Orchard three. Nicely done by Nathan Orchard. The corner right. of James Gonzalez saying, you are ahead. Thinking Referring to that uh, ride time, that escape time. Oh, he's got the arm trapped. Oh, this is beautiful. Oh, nice. Nice stuff. Ooh, bad. Top Spot. of the second overtime, Good rather. Time. Top of the second. Nathan Orchard. Control now trying to yeah, James. maintain control here. Gonzalez trying to move. Nice five one. Oh, beautiful. One on one control. Gonzalez sticking in there trying to get that riding time. It's your hand back. I really didn't know what overtime was going to look like with strikes. We're finding out Nathan Orchard trying to make those strikes lead to a stoppage. Now he's in deep on that crush. Oh, he's got it. Push that up. Oh, he's Push definitely that squeezing. Push that up. Gonzalez oh. able to get free. Beautiful. Wow. Oh, he's almost out. Beautiful. Wow. There he is. Gonzalez. Woo. Wow. I don't know where we're at on escape time. This will be interesting. So this is the bottom of the second overtime. We are still headed to one more overtime if we do not get a stoppage here. But if James Gonzalez is able to get a submission, it's done. OK, this is the second overtime. Second overtime. I apologize. I said it is. had a lot of action. We got two tournaments tonight. <laughs> TJ DeSantis, Ben Saunders, Kelvin Gastelum, Combat Jiu Jitsu Worlds. We are in overtime. Bottom of the second overtime, our final semi-final here of the lightweight bracket. No chill. The winner of this will face Wagner Hosha in the finals to crown the first ever CJJ World Lightweight Champion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Body triangle, body triangle. Right, Orchard almost free. He's free. Now that was a quick response by Orchard. He did get away quicker than he did in the first overtime, so. Again, we don't have an official clock next to us. 30 seconds of hold, Nate. 30 seconds of hold. And they're going to accumulate all the time and escape. Quickest escape, escape time. Yeah, okay. quickest escape time. We'll move on. So top of the third overtime, Nathan Orchard in control here. He has the back of James Gonzalez. There you go. There you go. Keep moving. Body triangle good, yeah, here. he did a good job making sure not to go too crazy with the strikes. Ooh, flattened out Hook. now Hook. is Gonzalez. You need more time, Nate. You need more time. Cook, you need more time, cook, Nate. Corner cook. of Orchard telling him he needs more time. Which would be smart. Gonzalez has been very difficult to submit here in this position. And the body triangle's got to be fatiguing for Gonzalez. I mean, his second match of the night, he's already gone through the 10 minute regulation period. Two overtime rounds now. This is his third. Yeah, you got Nathan Orchard on your back with a body triangle. That can't be too good. That's a dangerous game. <laughs> Pull his elbow above his head. Can't be too comfortable right here. It is very uncomfortable to be in that position. Orchard taking his time, making sure that he doesn't get too aggressive and lose anything. Gonzalez making some space, moving. Orchard trying to adjust. Push that out, push that out. Now he's trying to crush the face once again, trying to isolate nice, that nice. arm. Now these keep guys are rolling nice. through. Oh, they man. turned, they, they were almost running out of real estate. I don't know if Nathan Orchard did that on purpose or. Oh, that's a beautiful move. Grab it, Kamor, Kamor, keep it live. Kamor, keep it live. Gonzalez almost free. Orchard rolling through and he loses it. Wow. But Orchard was able to just get a few more seconds and every second counts here in overtime. Yeah, going around the head, grabbing the uh, the armpit on the other side. I mean, that's almost a neck crank in its own right. So that was a beautiful control spot. Now Gonzalez changing things up, electing spider web here in the bottom of the third overtime. Orchard trying to get free. He's in good position. Oh, he's he's free. Nathan Orchard may have locked it up right there. He might have locked it up right there. We will find out what the official escape time is here in a moment. but. Really, what a classic between these two guys. A lot on the line, a spot in the finals on the line. 
I believe they will calculate everything. Bruce Buffer will have our winner. And winner by fastest escape in overtime, Nathan Orchard. Nathan Orchard on his way to a rematch with Wagner Hosha. This time, it will be for Combat Jiu-Jitsu World Lightweight Gold. Oh, that gives me goosebumps. Hey, this is going to be amazing. Let's take a look at this replay, Kelvin. Nathan Orchard able to get free. He did it perfectly. Yeah, he, he went straight to his knees, didn't give the guy a chance to adjust or, or, or try and finish that arm bar. He just went straight to his knees and got out. Credit to Nathan Orchard. He was down, I think, early in the overtime with the escape time, but he gets it done. Let's take a look at how our lightweight final came to be. Wagner Hosha victorious over Mikey Zindler. He then took out Jason Hayden. Now he meets Nathan Orchard, who just got past James Gonzalez. And in our quarterfinal, Samson Fumabout was quick work for the man of the inventor of the dead orchard. All right, we have a special match headed your way next. Former UFC title challenger, Wilson Hayes. He takes on Ben Eddy. This is CJJ World. Up next is our featured special match of the evening as 10th Planet Freaks product, Ben Eddy meets Wilson Hayes representing Alliance MMA. Straight ahead, it's Ben Eddy versus the former UFC title challenger, Wilson Hayes. This is CJJ Worlds. Ladies and gentlemen, we would like to present to you one more special match in the lightweight division before we move on to our finals. Introducing first, representing 10th Planet Freaks, Ben Eddy. And from Alliance MMA, Wilson Hayes. for this contest, Mike Beltran. I figure it should be known that uh, Ben Eddy actually bit through his lip maybe a week ago, had to get it stitched up, and that's why he is not part of the tournament. But he's good enough to go for this special match, so if you see blood, it might be uh, split let's go, let's go, let's go. up. Wilson Hayes actually threw a bit of a right hand there. Hayes, the former UFC title challenger, former Elite XC featherweight champion. Veteran of mixed martial arts, veteran of grappling as well in multiple tournaments. I think he's excited to be out there. Yeah, he looks fired up, ready to go. Slapped him in the face standing. <laughs> Super just, fired up. Instinct. Yeah. We're not the only ones excited here tonight, guys. I mean, these, these guys are going for it. I mean, just to be a part of a special match on this card, CJJ won. I mean, this is your, your CJJ won veteran. I think that gives you some street cred. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> Eddie went to his seat. Eight two strikes there from Hayes. And you look at these two men. Eddie a lot longer, a lot taller than Wilson Hayes. Is that play a factor here in the guard with the length of Ben Eddie and the, the stockiness of Wilson Hayes? Yeah, I think you could play in more of Ben Eddie's favor. Dead or longer. He's got to watch that arm. Trying to work this triangle. He's going for the arm ball. This is huge. If he gets it. Not a straight traditional triangle here by any means. He's not trained with uh, Wilson for two years at, in San Diego. So I know the caliber that he, that he is. And he's, he's, he's no slouch. Man. He's a legit black belt. Really trying to work that arm. Now using the strikes, but we're trying to open up Wilson Hayes. Hayes taking those right to the top of the head. The forehead, top of the head, that's probably where you'd want to take yeah, those strikes the most. This is pretty much a dead orchard without your arm in, so there's a lot of arm bar variations you can do from here. You can see Ben Eddy consistently trying to get that arm. Posture! Ben Eddy fighting out of 10 Planet Freaks. You can hear the champ 
Gio Martinez in his corner. Yep, Oceanside. What a good crew they have down there. And now Armour oh, coming. Oh, oh, oh wow. Ben Eddie by Savic here. He stops Wilson Hayes. Wow, what a win for Ben Eddie. Holy smokes. Huge, huge victory for Ben Eddie against Wilson Hayes tonight. That Beautiful is a guard feather. pull. Wow. In his cap, he gets it done. He gets it done in regulation via stoppage. Beautiful submission for the 10th Planet product. To make it official, here is Bruce Buffer. And we have a winner in 2 minutes, 26 seconds. By Dead Orchard, Ben Eddie. Ben Eddie getting it done. Credit to Wilson Hayes for giving him a fight. Whoa. Combat Jiu-Jitsu Worlds. Everything and more you thought it would be. Nice sign of respect by both of these guys. Ben Eddy would have loved to have been in the tournament, but this win, Kelvin, just a sweep. Man, well, here's Ben Eddy just holding on to his knees and his shin, trying to get that triangle. He stuck with it, Ben, and I think Wilson tried to get free. He left that arm he was open. Yeah, he was trying to cross through the dead orchard, but um, Ben Eddy is such a ninja off his back here. That's his home right there, and he kept going for the arm, kept going for the arm. Wilson was really good at defending it, but ultimately right Ooh. here, the extension can only go so far, and you either have to tap or snap. I mean, look at how tall and long Ben Eddy is. Wilson Hayes postures all the way up. Ben Eddy's still on the floor. He's like balancing on his head. Wilson did everything he could to get away, but it's hard to drag that man off of you when he's got your arm locked up like that. Yeah, he was nonstop consistently going for that left uh, left arm. I mean, Hayes is almost 100% vertical, and Eddie's head is still planted on the floor, and nicely done for the 10th Planet product. He makes his master, Eddie Bravo, very happy. Our special match in the books. Up next, the Bantamweight Tournament Finals. CJJ Worlds will crown a 135 pound champion. You're watching CJJ Worlds right here on Inch by Inch. Like to thank proud sponsors of our Combat Jiu Jitsu Worlds. Nuaza Apparel. Barnana, the super banana snack. Datsusara, hemp gear for victory. Cnex Wear. Elixicure, all natural hemp infused pain relief. 10th Planet Jiu Jitsu, no gi, all day. Over 90 locations worldwide. Visit them at 10thplanetjj.com. And our main sponsor, West Coast Cure. Welcome to the Datsusara Podcast. I'm Chris O'Dell, and today our guest is Eddie Bravo. So, Eddie, can you tell us how you became an advocate for him? Hey. Jack Herrera, he wrote The Emperor Wears No Clothes. He had this conspiracy theory that all these big wigs, they hear about hemp making a comeback, because now they have the decorticator machine that processes hemp. Harry Ensinger was the first drug czar. He was the one responsible for presenting in front of Congress with these newspaper stories that were completely fake. Woman smokes marijuana, kills her children, and then jumps out a window. That brainwash that was saying marijuana made you kill people. Hmm. And people just kept believing it, and I believed it. I learned the truth really is a sacred plant. You could do so much with it. You could eat it. It's medicine, use it as fuel, clothing. Yep. I met Joe Rogan at Jiu Jitsu, and he was not into marijuana at all. It took like six months trying to crack his brain open. I remember one time driving on the 101 South, we start talking about it again, and then he just pulls over and goes, let's smoke right now. I go, right now? I'm like, okay, we had a little man bag. I had a little pipe in it, and we smoked it. Boom. We go right to Baskin Robin. So he's eating this Sunday and he was freaking out. And that night, he did a set at the comedy store. And I said, hey, I smoked pot for the first time. And God damn, I didn't know chocolate sundaes were so goddamn good. <laughs> the coolest thing about Datsusara, in my opinion, is that all their gear is made from hemp. And Datsusara 
has devoted everything to bringing hemp back to the people once and for all. I appreciate the plug, Eddie. Thanks for sharing. Bantusara, hemp gear for victory. The Jiu Jitsu Dojo is the ultimate training ground for life. Jiu Jitsu will accelerate the evolution of your being, your consciousness, your soul. Through this amazing art, you will prove to yourself that you can master anything you set your mind to. Happy birthday, Eddie Bravo! I leave for Brazil tomorrow. Are you the fear factor guy? I'm uh, like six pounds over. Time to sweat it out. Just imagine someone that has no idea how different your game is. I'll tell you what this weekend was, man. It was a culmination point where all your hard work comes to like one great moment in time. You showed that you're a fucking champion. Guy who goes against convention. You created your own shit and figured interesting ways to get around problems in jujitsu. And shows you that great things are possible if you work hard, if you dedicate yourself, and you use your creativity, and you push through. Your own human potential just goes up. My 10th Planet Association has grown rapidly to over 70 academies worldwide, and their curriculums are all synced to 10th Planet headquarters located in downtown Los Angeles. I'm Eddie Bravo. I hope to see you on the mats. Tonight, are sanctioned by CAMO, the California Amateur Mixed Martial Arts Organization, led by President J.T. Steele. Our event supervisor in attendance is Chris Crail. Referees in charge, Mike Melcon and Jonathan Romero. Fat side physician, Dr. Vega. And now, this next match is competing for the Bantamweight title. Introducing first. Representing Hensor Gracie Academy, Tidebar, Tideco Honorio. And his opponent, representing California Mixed Martial Arts, Chad Savage Gar. The Bantam League Finals are upon us. Sidemar Memorio, Chad the Savage George, 135 pound combat jiu jitsu gold is on the line. Referee Jason Romero will oversee this contest. I believe we have the two very best bantamweights tonight going at each other. This, is, this has been an awesome tournament so far from both of these guys. Both have been having great outings in each of their matches. I mean, I know this is a grappling tournament, but this feels like one of the biggest mixed martial arts events I've ever been involved in. This is really, really great stuff here. Chad George has been on a mission. He's wanted to get back to the finals, wanted to make a statement. He said, really, I was injured in my first ever CJJ tournament. That wasn't the best I could be. Tonight, he has looked flawless. Yeah, he's looking amazing. Made it to the finals again, and you know he's going to get that win. Make history tonight. George won his first round relatively quickly over trapping her with a Darce choke. He tried to make quick work of Sheridan Moran with the same choke, but Moran was tough, ultimately taking him to overtime. So George has $5,000 in the bank. Like to try to rack up another one on his way to capturing 
CJJ Gold. Now that we're in the finals, it'll be interesting how fatigue you, plays into this. Both guys have had great matches, a lot of output, a lot of energy. So yeah, for Homorio, he got his first win over JM Holland via submission in overtime, and then he submitted Nick Pace with a leg lock in regulation. Trying to get deep on that arm is Homorio. 30 seconds. Guys. The wrestler Chad George trying to shoot in, get a takedown. There's the legs, nicely done. Homorio able to adjust. Okay. Beautiful explosion. I mean, the they were just kind of pummeling, and all of a sudden, they explode into that double leg. Don't forget our lightweight strikes, finals though. coming up a little bit later. Our rematch: Nathan Orchard versus Wagner Hosha. I like how you don't have to worry about the up two. Oh. That one woke up Memorio, and I think forward, everyone forward. inside of 14 Garden. I think everybody in this room felt it, this whole building. <laughs> that was awesome. He pulled his stands up, and he's rocked him a little bit. <laughs> his, his legs are a little wobbly. <laughs> Face palmed right to the floor. Yeah, he pulled leg right to him so he could slap him. <laughs> Just as I'm saying, well, it's nice that you can't up kick, and then right. he comes down with that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Two and a half minutes, it'll be on that here in regulation. You gotta be a drag in there if he's gonna just stick his hands out. Near Josh Barnett in the corner of Chad George. A little fan getting impatient. Good thinking, Chad. Yeah, like Sidemore might be uh, a little bit hesitant going to his back right now after that shot. And it was Homorio early against J.M. Holland that was landing insane hard strikes. Good. Double leg attempt. Attempt. And George just explodes with those takedowns. Even when he doesn't get it, you can see that momentum go through the body uh, as his head went right into the chest of Homorio. Yep. Good, beautiful, nice. Chad. Yeah, you can see watch the benefit hips. of good. wrestling. Watch your hips. Good, good, good. More strikes Stay here by George. Nice. Nice. Really getting Stay aggressive on. with Stay those. On, nice. I like how he pulls move the leg forward, to him forward, so that he can strike. slap his Come opponent. Forward, bud. Move forward, move forward. If he wants to invert, that's fine. Just crawl. Drawing a strike to the inner thigh. Good. Is yeah, George. if you've never gotten hit inside the thigh, it just hurts <laughs> a lot. Morio was kind of twirling his legs around. I don't think it really caught George off guard, but it did uh, allow him to stand up and get back to his feet. George hesitated just a little bit, and Simon was just able to get back left, standing. About five and a half minutes remain here in regulation. This for the first ever Combat Jiu-Jitsu World Bantamweight Championship. TJ DeSantis, Kelvin Gasolum, Ben Killaby Saunders inside Florentine Gardens. Kelvin's getting into a shadow box in here. <laughs> I'm over here, man. Sidemore seems These to really fights like the fired uh, up. Sorry, man. No, you're good, man. The, the Sidemore seems to really like the uh, the leg sweeps trying to trip the legs out. Although I think he got uh, yelled about potential kicking in one of his last nice. matches. You gotta be innovative though with a guy like Chad George from that strong wrestling base. See, it's gonna it be is. more than just a, a tie up that's gonna get Chad on his back. Yeah, no, he's, he's a very dominant wrestler so it, it'll be hard to take his back. Beautiful Chad, I like it. Oh, ooh. very, very close, and man, <laughs> nice work by our That's referee, you him, you calm up. Jonathan Quick. Romero. Run off of the drag. He saved Morio, I think, Four from minutes. about a four-foot fall there. Slightly lower tempo to this finals here from both of these guys. Both of these guys have had a really high output in both their matches coming into the finals. And I think maybe a little bit more than just that too, Kelvin. As we see a nice bit of flurry action. There's a lot on the line here. They've made it to the final. They know they're one win away from money. They're one win away from immortality in combat jiu-jitsu history. Absolutely. 
A lot on the line right here. Yeah, there's pressure and endurance Good. on the line right now. Good. He wants to play guard. Let's test it. Let's right. find our opportunity. So they're, they're, they're being a little bit more uh, okay, clear the intellectual about the what they do. Yeah, they, they, they definitely. And, and I think that's a respect Step by forward. both guys. Both have been forward, very, very uh, productive in their matches earlier. And you can't make a mistake with either of these men. No, no. Both these guys have been great sportsmen and showmanship. George kind of complaining to the referee there that maybe he was getting kicked, but the ref saying no. He's just pushing, just trying to make space with his legs. A little slap to the booty. Drop one in over the top when you can. Shuck the leg. Memorio kind of trying to catch George off Good. guard with yes. the legs. The booty says no, I'm going to catch you yes. off guard with my left hand. You've got to be more consistent with it. Let's go. Let's start picking the pace up. Memorio able to stand. Three minutes remain here in regulation. Three minutes left for the winner of this match to walk out with $10,000. Both of them have one finish in regulation to lock up another five grand. They need to get a stoppage here in the next two minutes and 47 seconds. If he wants to get that money, he's got to finish it, yeah. I think the most important thing though tonight would be that title. That right, the prestige. <laughs> yeah. No one can ever take that away from you. The first ever combat jujitsu bantamweight champion. Foot sweep again. There you go, nice jab. Now in on takedown. Memorial Good. trying to roll through. George. Yes! Oh! Yes. He keeps the position with his base. Rains down some punch. Good! Oh! Jab on the Move Memorial forward, Chad. Move answer. forward. Do not let him back up. Two minutes. Go ahead, let him go. Let him try to work, but counter. You Chad know where George going. staying true to his name, being a savage out there. Yeah. Come in. Reset back in the center of the mat. We've really seen that in both divisions, both sides of the lightweight and bantamweight brackets. These guys are using every inch allotted on this mat. Is that an up kick? No, it was to the groin. Oh. A slap to the groin. Hope he's wearing a coat. <laughs> oh, uh, I don't know. Is that even allowed? No, I don't know. It was uh, it was talked about because whether or not you could use that as an advantage with a body triangle on the back. Right. Yeah, I the, cup, that. the cup and the spine could yeah, be a, <laughs> a submission in its own right. Yeah. Diamond yeah. cup. Yeah, Ivan Salaver is really good at getting yes. that body triangle in the back and submitted Tony Fricklin, I think, in the UFC with that. Yeah. Chad George trying to penetrate through. One minute. Sometimes the foot sweeps do hurt to the shin, though. Yeah, I think, oh, nice. beautiful takedown. Explosive as a savage. 54 seconds left. Honorio trying to frame up an omoplata. Gets top position out of it. Nicely done by Sidemar Honorio. Honorio now going to set up chop. Sits back for a leg. Chad George, calm here. 30 seconds remain here in regulation. George throwing Ooh. off the right hand. Careful now here. Going for a leg. Is that one? Right? Oh, right. oh, three. 20 seconds remain in regulation. <laughs> 10 minutes might not be enough for these two gentlemen. Good. Another takedown attempt. I feel like that was the first time Sidemore was on top, right? Pretty much, yeah. Hard to get on top of the wrestler. Hard to get dominant position on Chad George. But one way you can ensure dominant position on Chad George is getting to overtime. George is really the favorite inside Florentine Gardens. Coin flip. Looks Taking like George point. will go on offense first here. Three maximum overtime periods. Yeah, Chad George has been putting on a show all night. I mean, he's been yeah. entertaining the whole night. Crowd's loving it. Yeah. Chooses the back. Each half of our overtimes are maximum three minutes. George on the back of Sidemar Hamoria. 
Chad George representing California Mixed Martial nice, Arts. Nice, nice. Morio, Team Henzo, Gracie Philly. There it is, there it is, Chad. There it is, Chad. Now, George is close. Very, very close. The combat to get to go. Man, that was quick. He needs to submit him quicker. He needs Man, to submit that was him quicker. Quick. Lightning quick. Yeah. We'll see what Mario wants. He's going to take the back. Now he's going to go spider web. Oh. The crowd behind the Ooh, Savage. Jack my heart's George. jumping. The EBI 11 CJJ finalist came up short to Nick Honstein and now is seconds away from CJJ Bantamweight Gold. Tick, tick, tick goes the clock. Sidemar Hamorio needs a miracle. Now trying to separate the arms. Is Hamorio with his leg. Grimacing. The output here. Chad, the Savage Gold is your first ever CJJ World Bantamweight Champion. Wow. Well done. Very well done, very well done by Five Chad George. $5,000 I mean. richer is the Savage. And he has etched his name in combat jiu-jitsu history. Live it up, Chad George. Tonight is one of the biggest nights of your combat career. He had a lot of hype coming in tonight, and he delivered tonight. It was awesome. Yeah, some of the best uh, open palms we've seen. See him embrace the former UFC heavyweight king, Josh Barnett. Tell me this is just slap fighting, ladies and gentlemen. It is not. <laughs> Jiu-Jitsu to the extreme. Chad, the Savage George. You are a world champion, my Look friend. Live it up. Sidemar Hamorio, very game. Unable to get it done in overtime. To make it official and to crown our champion, here's Bruce Buffett. Look at Chad George, looking. Very emotional tonight. And you the can winner tell by oh, rear naked choke in overtime, and the first ever combat jujitsu world bantamweight champion, Chad Savage George. That's a huge moment for him, man. Dude, that's a pretty belt. That beautiful, is a pretty beautiful. belt to take back to your gym. You can tell this meant a lot to him. You know? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. To make it to the finals last time. And come up a little short. Rip. Yeah. And then come over here and win it tonight. I mean, he, he he put on a great show tonight for all the fans here tonight. Prior to the show, man, you could see, you know, the confidence in his game. You mm -hmm. could see him just walking around, smiling, joking around. Kind of had a glow to him. Yeah, he really did. I mean, he just walked. Like he had a swagger to him the whole night, wrestling like he had a swagger to him. I mean, he, he he came in ready to win tonight. Yeah, he said, this is my night, and he took it. Winner, Chad George, you are truly a savage. You came back, you're a finalist at the EBI 11 Combat Jiu-Jitsu Tournament. Tonight, you get back fully healthy. You look like you're gonna hold on to this title for a long time, sir. I just one thing. Team Savage, where are we at? Um, first of all, I just want to say this is such an incredible experience. Um, I trained so hard for this. My team came together at California Mixed Martial Arts. They came into the gym. This win is for every single person that has ever been on the mats with me or for yourself and have ever pushed towards a dream. I promise that if you never give up, everything and anything is possible. I've had a chance to call a lot of your mixed martial arts fights. You fought all over the world. Tonight, you're a combat jiu-jitsu world champion. Where does this rank in the highlights of your career? For many reasons, this is one of the most monumental moments, not only in my career, but my life. I have overcome so many different things to get here today. And it's just an amazing experience to be here, to be on this stage with such incredible competitors. To come back after my last uh, performance at combat jiu-jitsu, and to come back and do it again and become champion. We did it! Ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together. The first ever CJJ Bantamweight World Champion, Chad the Savage George.
ladies and gentlemen, it's time for our final match of the evening. The Combat Jiu-Jitsu World now presents our lightweight finals. Introducing first, representing Wagner Rocha Martial Arts, Wagner Rocha. And representing 10th Planet Portland, Nathan Orchard. A rematch from just a few short weeks ago, Wagner Hosha back on the mat with Nathan Orchard. This time, it is for Combat Jiu Jitsu Lightweight Gold. Yeah, this is a rematch from EBI. Now they're going CJJ World's rules. And this rules, my goodness, the electricity inside Florentine Gardens. Mike Beltran starts us off, TJ DeSantis, Kelvin Gasolum, Ben Killaby Saunders, the CJJ World Lightweight Championship on the line. Nathan Orchard in the black, Wagner Hosha in the blue with gray. Last time Wagner Hosha was able to e or not ease by, but he squeaked by a win over Nathan Orchard. He was able to win in overtime, he just rode out Nathan Orchard. He really had the control and, you know, we'll see if that match looks anything like tonight. Tonight is different. Strikes are allowed, and Nathan That's Orchard it. has made use of those strikes, really landing a lot of strikes. It was like we go headbutt there. Or an accidental oh. eye poke, maybe? Yeah. Yeah. I'm signing sportsmanship. Oh. Trying to sweep the leg out there That's is Hosha. Circle circle. See if Nathan Orchard tries an arm drag to the back or an ankle pick again. We're a minute into regulation. Keep your eye on that clock. If the fight does not hit the floor before the eight minute uh, mark there is shown, then they'll be put on the floor, part of the get down rule. Cool. A little bit of hand fighting. Here by both gentlemen. Everything is a fight with Nathan Orchard and down. Wagner Hosh. I mean, these guys both wanted the redemption, a lot, lot on the line here. And when so they, exciting to see it play out. When they go head to head right there and put their heads together, you can see yeah. them grinding it. Oh. Big Crowhawk. <laughs> yep. 20 seconds. It's not a very down. comfortable feeling. <laughs> no, they're not making it enjoyable. Now, tie Crow hop. now with Wagner Hosh, I mean, He's got to try to go for a takedown here. I mean, both of the, uh, now Orchard goes to the floor. So now yep. the get down rule, not in play. Intelligently. Don't even worry about that. Go, Trying to go, roll yes. out of it. Gives yes. up his back though, does Orchard. Almost running out of room. Mike Beltran's Ready, bringing them back to the center. Very important here to not go, go. lose that position. Down. Enjoyed down. now by yes. Wagner Hosha. Now we see Nathan Orchard trying to get in the leg. Hosha trying to fight off this leg lock. Straight Nathan Orchard straight. trying to finish it. Toe hold up coming for Hosha. Oh, Orchard man. needing to defend. Here you go. Come on. Exchanging Come on. leg submissions. Now Hosha tries to go on top. Back in that back position. This Roll was a position that, that Hosha had a few times on Gary Tona when they met at ADCC. That's it. Tona was able to roll now, a lot now, of it. Now, now like Orchard that. able to Roll trying to get free. Cold, cold, cold. Going for the legs Going again. Defend your legs. Defend the skate. There we go. Ow. Quick Save reminder the, that we can villain. strike in combat jujitsu. Flooding the body is back Here we go. Load your leg up on the head. Defend when you get a moment. Defend, Defend when you head. get a moment. Toes escape. On the head. Toes on the head. I've seen now plenty of escape. fights Throw get finished like that. Strikes to the ribs. Now we escape. Nathan is fully committed to this. Yeah, he's definitely in on that yeah. leg toe hold here for here we go. Nathan Orchard. Heavy on the leg, light him up, light him up. Now Hosh is trying to say, light him up. There he is. There he is. Oh, 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 Hosh is trying to spin. He's on, he's on, he's on. Nicely done now by Roger Hosh getting free. Now he moves forward intelligently. He's going to turn, you know that. Oh, almost off the mat. Right, go, go back, back to the center, same position. Can you feel it? So much on the line. Nathan Orchard, Wagner Hosha, the winner. First ever lightweight champion at CJJ Worlds. Here we go, V. Yeah, the fact that these guys already Control those legs. fought Control each legs. other, now they're here in the finals again, trying to go for another title with money. I mean, the st stakes are higher this time, I feel. Again in the standing position. 
Mike Beltron restoring order. Here we go, V. You control here. You control. Oh, nice with the roll through attempt there Don't by Orchard trying to get a leg. Don't leave it. Now light him. To go. Here we go. This is where you want. Ooh, that was in the back of the head. Beat it over. Under up to the back. Gotta watch yeah, it. You cannot strike to the back of the head. Pull your under up through. Beat it over. Once you got that arm, you're good. Now a gift wrap. That's it. Now you make them pay. You know, I know there's no judges, up. but if there him. was, I mean, Wagner would be winning this fight. Put your fist in your armpit. Put your leg it's giving uh, it, uh, Orchard you got it. You lots got of problems tonight. Through. Now you Let's see if Wagner can turn this into something more than just a wrap. There you go. You're fine. Whatever you take, you don't get that. You got that That's yours. Now back to close. Beautiful. Nathan Orchard. Close your stats. Orchard tries to go back in on the leg. Kill the hip. Right Stand hand up. by Hoshi gets through. Go back to Don't let him climb. Don't let him climb. Now Nathan right Orchard right might be going to his game. He's trying to go to the guard. Oh, 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 leg. Oh, left hand open. by Hosha. Man, they're going These guys are going for it. Yeah. This is the finals. They're, they're going at it. You know, both of you guys found yourselves in, in the Ultimate Fighter. Kelvin, you won it. What is it like getting to the finals? Because obviously it's another fight, but it's the culmination of a lot of hard work. These guys know that if they win this fight, yes, it's one fight, but it's, they're here because of two prior efforts, and you etch your name in history. There's more pressure because of that. Absolutely. I mean, these guys are fighting for money. They're fighting for a title for the first ever CJJ title. Yes. I feel there like the go, stakes good. are higher in this match no, than their last you match. Clear the head. You gotta clear yep. the head. Foster, there we go. This is good. one that neither of these guys will ever press forget. I mean, just being a finalist is a big deal, but Get the ultimate glory, the walking out of the CJJ head. World Championship. Move. Oh, nice move. Oh, nice ten out of ten there. Make a break. Now trying to land some more strikes. Under four months remaining regulation. Nice right hand by the Brazilian Hosha. Another right hand. Yeah! Now and now. Wow. This is it! Wagner Hosha trying to pound his way to CJJ Gold. You get nothing oh. back here! You start pressing the Trying to hit him. Trying to go out the back door. Keep working what you said you wanted here. And he's going to get right. away. Nicely done by Nathan Orchard. Look for the back door. But here we are, feet, feet. Back door. Three minutes left. Remember Another that shot there looked like it hit the back of the head. Beltron's telling him. Remember the trap. Remember Hosha the trap. lobbying Trapped with the, the arms. Once his arms are isolated, he's got nothing to defend his face. Double frame. Wagner Hosha. Right. Double frame on that. Double but Mike Beltran warning Wagner Hosha to be careful back of the head. Yeah, not the back of the head. Elbow control. Elbow Position. Now back to full mount is Hosha. That's trying to bump free is Orchard eating some right hands. Something. Now left. He's giving you something. Left and right by Wagner Hosha. Palm strike. Palm strike. More strikes. strikes. Mike Beltran getting close. Man. Could he pound his way to CJJ Gold? Whoa, whoa, Mike Beltran, time to move. Oh! Wagner Hosha wow. by TKO. Unbelievable. Wow. Nathan Orchard not really complaining. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. Is that the, the first, first ever TKO, TKO wow. in CJJ history. Wow. Captures lightweight gold for Wagner Hosha. Unbelievable. What an awesome show. And still a show of respect from both of them, man. Oh, my goodness. 24 years to the date after the first UFC, I couldn't think of a better tribute to where mixed martial arts, Brazilian jiu-jitsu, the combat sports world, CJJ Worlds etches its name, honestly, guys, as one of the best grappling events I've ever seen. Oh. Without Hands a doubt, this, this has down. been the best, the best jujitsu competition I've ever been a part of or witnessed. The first of many to come, I promise you that. Wagner Hosha, getting it done. He stops Nathan Orchard to make it official. Here's Bruce Buffett. Ladies and gentlemen, the winner by the first ever TKO at 7 minutes, 26 seconds, and taking home $15,000, our first ever Combat Jiu-Jitsu World's Lightweight Champion, Wagner 
Rosha! Huge win by Wagner. Nathan is as tough as they come. Man, these two guys literally put on a show the whole night. I mean, great, great showmanship and entertainment. Yeah. You know, this was this these guys are fighting, but they're entertaining. And styles make fights. They were two different stylists going at it, but man, we got to see a full mounted uh, TKO assault. From I didn't think I was hoping we'd see one tonight. I didn't think we'd see it. Yeah, man, and to win a title with it. Wow. Win the finals, win the title, win fifteen thousand dollars. Oh my god. Yeah, he's gonna be partying that's tonight. Uh, that's uh you kill, you kill two birds with one stone. You mentioned third time to charm. Let's start there. You've been a finalist before, your finals tonight, now you're a champion. How much did you call upon the first match with Nathan Orchard at EBI a few weeks ago in finishing him here in the finals? I, uh, you know, the last EBI, uh, PJ Barge, Isa, and uh, Nathan, they, they kicked my butt. And uh, I think they made it very easy for uh, Gary to, to get that quick finish on me because you know, I fought Gary before and he didn't get that finish that way. You know, no, no disrespect to Gary and his team, they're, they're you know, amazing. And if it wasn't for those guys, this this TBI, uh, and uh, you know, of course Eddie as well, wouldn't be popping the way it is. So, you know, I got nothing but respect for them. But you know, they're rivals. So, you know, I wish uh, Gary was here tonight. I would have liked to land some of those slaps on him. But <laughs> maybe we'll see that one in the future. You get it done in the finals via strikes. The first ever CJJ competitor to get a TKO by ref stoppage. What happened there that you? thought, hey, I can actually finish this with strikes. Is there anything that Nathan did that you saw an avenue to victory with strikes? Um, our first match, I finished the, the match out like I did there. And um, sorry, he, um, me and him were talking, and he's like, man, you're not getting anything. And I told him, I said, if this was combat, you'd be in trouble. And he smiled and laughed. He goes, you're right. He started bucking like crazy to get out. And I had that stuck in my brain. I said, if I get him out, he's not getting out. I felt it. So I, I was really trying to push for the back of the mount because I do really well with the back as well. So, you know, pushing the pressing, the heaviness, the wrestling. I didn't anticipate everybody to wrestle me in the last DBI. And that killed me. You know, I thought everybody was going to pull guard and play that game. And everybody was like, nah, I'm not playing bottom for you, dude. <laughs> so the day I, I trained a lot of wrestling leading up to this, I knew nobody wanted to play guard tonight. Today belongs to you. You get it done, Wagner. It seems like your style of jujitsu is made for combat jujitsu. What do you say to the other 155 pounders that are gunning for your title? I'm here waiting. And, uh, you know, my, my jiu-jitsu is what it is. You know, it's old school. It's, you know, back to the lineage, you know, being mean and you know, nice about what I do. And I know that. And I, I, I like it. I like hearing guys like you on the commentating complaining about my style. I love it. To me, that's what I think jiu-jitsu is. That's how I learned it. So I, I bring the old school the Carlson Gracie type jiu-jitsu. You know, the smash and pass, smash and Look for the sub, you know. There you go. Tonight you look for the striking finish, and you got it. Congratulations, Wagner Hosha. Your first ever CJJ lightweight champion. You met. There you go. First finish in strikes. You mentioned the old school. I got to bring in one of the inventors of the Ultimate Fighting Championship 24, year, 24 years ago today. Orion Gracie, Campbell McLaren, Art Davies, so many put together UFC 1 in McNichols Arena in Denver, Colorado. And Horian was here tonight. If I can get a few minutes with the legend, Horian Gracie. Without you, and 24 years ago tonight, I don't know if we would be here. You were here from the first match on. What do you think of combat jiu-jitsu? You know, I have been uh, thinking of a match like this for a long time. When you launched the UFC 24 years ago, it was to promote Gracie jiu-jitsu, it was to bolster it, get it to the masses here in North America. Did you ever expect that we would arrive to something like this, a grappling tournament that stands alone as a Brazilian jiu-jitsu tournament? This isn't mixed martial arts. This is still about the art. Of course, the essence of jiu-jitsu is self-defense. Like I said, I've been thinking about an event like this for a long time. I actually suggested this a while back, and I'm glad to see the guys are putting this happening now. So it's good. 
Horian, it's an honor to have you here tonight. Thank you for everything that you've done for the sport. Horian Gracie, ladies and gentlemen. What a night. We knew we would have history, and we got it. A Bantamweight champion, Chad George. A lightweight champion, Wagner Hosha. What's next for CJJ Worlds? Who knows, we'll find out next year. For everyone here in Los Angeles, Kelvin Gastelum, Ben Saunders, I'm TJ DeSantis. We'll see you next time for CJJ Worlds. History has been made here tonight at CJJ Worlds. We would like to thank our sponsors who made all of this possible. Nuaza Apparel. Barnana, the super banana snack. Datsusara, hemp gear for victory. Cenex wear. Elixicure, all natural hemp infused pain relief. 10th Planet Jiu Jitsu, no gi, all day. Over 90 locations worldwide. Visit them at 10thplanetjj.com. And our main sponsor, West Coast Cure. I didn't really know what to expect. It was scary, but it was already fight night. There was no backing out. I had to go forward with it. It didn't go well. I took a beating. It was tough. I walked out of the ring that night not feeling great about myself. My coach sat me down afterwards and he talked to me. He said, I know deep down that you can beat that guy. I know you don't believe it, but I believe it. And I don't want this to be the end of the book for you. It doesn't matter. You can beat anybody. I, I believed him. I didn't know if I believed myself, but I believed that he could help me get to where I wanted to go. And 11 years later, I've got five championship titles and things have worked out.